go. I forgot I had both mod view and regular view open and I thought I heard a robot alien double duker. <laughs> that sounds right, yeah. day when I had, you know, bathed. <laughs> We've got everything under control here. We've got everything under control in my life. There's no questions, no concerns, okay? Everything's fine. <laughs> Hello, welcome guys. It's important to always know where your towel is. Fun fact, this is a towel that Telly gave me when we did my hair. Um, she was like, here, I got you a towel that's orange that you can always use to dry your hair so that it doesn't bleed on any of your other towels. And I was like, that is very smart. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? Very smart. She sent me home with so much shit though, for real. She was like, okay, uh, here's a towel that is, you know, orange, so you won't, your hair won't bleed on anything. Um, here's some really high quality shampoo to wash your hair with. Here's some purple shampoo to wash the white bits with. Just take those home. Um, I got like eight different dyes. We used all of them. Just take them all home, you know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and I was like, Okay. <laughs> okay. Amazing. <laughs> Cat bug. Oh my gosh. I was thinking about you the other day. Not to put you on the spot or make you feel weird. <laughs> I was thinking about you the other day. Um, because I was thinking about our, our cafe that we got to build. <laughs> Is that the official dye towel? Yeah, that's what it was that's what it was given to me for. That is its job. Although we did establish last time that I washed my hair that um that it's not it's not really bleeding much anymore, which is great. The white bits are staying white even if I wash them with the with the rest. So love that. Very happy for me. So uh, honestly, that's like kind of keeping me from <laughs> re-dyeing the rest of my hair currently, because I'm like I just finally got out of the woods. <laughs> I finally got out of the woods. It's time to go. I hate to leave. I have to though. Cafe Pog, I missed you. I missed you. Have you been doing the non-canon nights, Catbug? I always feel so like, because I haven't been to any of them, I always feel so weird about going to them for some reason. Thought I would stop by and chill for a bit as I begin sicky recovery. Oh no, you've been sicky, I'm sorry. Yeah, there are um, non-canonical, like, Callus Row hangouts uh, for people during the downtime between seasons. I hope you feel better. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Yeah, I'm not too worried today, but you're right. I'll do it just in case. do that so she can still get it open and like say something to me if she wants me if she wants to yeah this week is bar night and improv if you want to do actual rp mess around i'd recommend joining another week honestly the like the rp nights are the ones that stress me out the most but also like situations where everyone is I, like has an excuse to all get drunk also like tends to make me uncomfortable so I'm like I don't know maybe I'll just never go <laughs> no 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 she's fine which is why I didn't put the barrier there to begin with but somebody was like should the barrier be there I'll put it there just in case 
just in case. Um, yeah, uh, yesterday we finally did board games. Well, board games, I say, with quotation marks around it. I was basically like, Sam, I want to play a board game. He was like, honey, you choose whatever you want to play and I'll play it with you. And I was like, okay, amazing. Um, so I brought down, I brought uh, Everdell down and one of the Escape the Room ones. The, um, uh, they're called Exit the Game. And I have two, I have one that's like, um, kind of like medium difficulty and one that's uh, closer to expert, which ProZD was like, the expert ones are actually fucking so difficult. <laughs> so I don't know why I did that to myself, but I brought down the, the like inter intermediate. Yeah, I brought down the, the mid tier one. And, uh, and I was like, which one of these sounds most interesting to you? And he was like, well, I know that you got the, the exit the game ones for us to play for a date night anyway. So let's do that. It was so fun, highly recommend. We managed to do it in a way where we didn't have to like destroy any part of the game. They're set up so that like potentially you would like cut or rip things or write on things. Um, so they're intended to be played once, but we, we tried really hard to not have to like ruin anything because at a certain point we were like, we have to give this to your parents. <laughs> so we managed to do the whole game with like, there were just some really light pencil marks on, on like a page that I erased, um, but everything else was totally fine. So we're just gonna, no explanation, drop it off uh, to my in-laws and be like, hey, this is how long this took us. You guys should take a crack at it. Um, it was really, really fun, really involved, but had lots of help built into the way that it's that it's run. Um, basically, like at least for the one that we did, which was uh, Escape the Cabin, I think, or The Abandoned Cabin or something like that. Um, uh, you have like a booklet and then there are lots of different cards and the book, as you figure things out, will be like, okay, grab this card or um, you know, like things like that. So there are cards that are involved with like the game and pieces that are involved with the game and figuring out like answers to things. But then there's also like, here are, here are three hint cards for every step of the escape room. So if you get stuck at a certain point, there's going to be three cards. The first card, again, at least in this one, the first card is here's everything that you need to have found or gotten in order to solve it. So that's kind of nice. If you're like trying to solve a thing and you're like, do we even have everything that we need for this? The first card will just tell you what you need. Um, so there were a couple of times where we were like, this seems unsolvable, but maybe it's not. And we're just being silly. And we would pick up the first card and it'd be like, you need to have X, Y, and Z. And we'd go, oh, we don't have everything yet. Right. And then, you know, to move on. Um, the second card is like an actual hint, like think about it this way or, you know, proceed in this fashion. And then, you know, if you're on the right track or not. And the third card is literally just the answer. Um, so we, I'm trying to remember if we use the second hint card for anything, but, uh, it was really fun. It took us like a couple of hours leisurely playing while eating. Um, and it was, yeah, super fun. Highly recommend. Uh, I know some people in like um, responses to things about exit the game have been like, oh, they're pretty expensive. But again, they're only intended to be played one. It's supposed to be like a long experience, right? But yeah, it was, it was pretty great. So we're excited to try the other one. Sam was like, how many of these are there? Next time we really got to focus. Like I want to time us for real. I was like, there he is. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, you can totally play it alone. So yeah, we also kind of feel like uh, if we manage to, if, if we give it to my in-laws and then they give it to somebody else, then, you know, definitely we got our money's worth out of just the enjoyment of being like, so. <laughs> But yeah, 
And then um, because I had, silly me, because I had left Everdell out, Clark came downstairs and was like, oh, is this the tree game? It's the tree game with the hedgehogs. And I was like, it sure is, honey. So we spent a decent amount of time this morning with Clark making up a game. <laughs> um, which was very fun. Uh, Everdell is like a, uh, like a settler sort of, or like um, a, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's a game where you're where, with like resource management and worker placement and stuff like that. Um, and it's got a beautiful board with like this big like tree that you build um, and all of this stuff and like tons of like really pretty little token pieces and things. And so Clark, again, because she's too little to understand how to play a game even remotely like that, um, Clark chooses the pieces that she thinks are the coolest and asks if she can take them out, and we do. And then, um, uh, and then, uh, you know, she comes up with a game. <laughs> I guess so. It's like card based. Um, Catan is a bit more like piece placement based, but yeah. And that inspired me because I was like, it sucks that I have these games and like, it's gonna be really hard to find, even even say like everything's super safe. Hi darling, what's up? And can you stay with daddy, honey? Cause it's quiet time, please. <laughs> Clarky, you can come in and say hi, but that's it, okay? <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Alrighty, Clarky, come on in. Hi. 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 I can look down your chair. You can turn the chair. What have you got with you? Do you want to show? Our mouse cheese. Hey, don't play with it. Don't play with it? No, because it's mine. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know that I wasn't allowed to play with it. Yeah, we have to use the magic word. Oh, is the magic word please? My daddy's big tummy. Yeah. Is that a Peppa thing? I think okay. I think that was a Peppa thing. No, it's not a Peppa. Thing. It's a people. It's not a Peppa thing. It's a people thing. Okay. You have to say my, my daddy's big tummy. No, it's my daddy's big tummy. Clarky's daddy's big tummy. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Daddy's big tummy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, daddy's big tummy. I did say it. Goodness gracious. I have to clean it. It has to get cleaned, honey. Sorry that I used your straw. I should have asked, shouldn't I? <laughs> I used her rainbow straw and she just saw it in a drink over there. And so she's upset. I used her rainbow straw and I didn't ask, so I said sorry. I'm in big trouble. 
That's fair. I should have asked. We told her it was hers. Oh, no, I have the cheese. She's going to be so mad. One sec. The straw and the cheese, I know. What kind of horrible mother am I? <laughs> I know, poor thing. This is also like her quiet time, which on some days means she naps and on other days means that she refuses to nap. So it's the time when she is the sleepiest in the day. And if she pushes past this, then she's fine until bedtime. Um, and if she takes a nap, she'll probably wake up mad. Because <laughs> that's just, that's the period that we're in right now. <laughs> it's not the rainbow straw, I know. I feel bad. <laughs> but like, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna try to like, teach her respect for other people's things you have to also respect when you've told her like this thing is yours right so <laughs> so i feel like it's important for me to to say sorry and to say that i'll ask if i can use it next time but <laughs> from from our perspective it feels like a huge reaction for a toddler it makes sense Baby girl took her first step by herself last night. I can't believe she's gonna be one next month. Oh. <laughs> Clark will remember this. She will too, 100%. Why do you have the rainbow straw if it's hers? Um, because we got boba and my straw was dirty so i was like ah i'll just use hers because they're like the thick straws for the boba and we have exactly three of them one for each of us um and one was and mine was dirty so i used hers and it was a mistake <laughs> huge mistake What are you gonna do? You apologize and you do better next time. <laughs> You're never gonna find your straw again. I know exactly where mine is. It's in the it's in the dishwasher. <laughs> oh, she's making some good sentences now. I know. Yeah. Yeah, there are definitely moments, like, it'll feel like over a period of a couple of days, suddenly her sentences are coming together even better and better, or she's, like, she's really starting to get a, a handle on L noises now. So there are lots of words that, that she used to either kind of, like, slur a little bit, or the L was more of, like, a W noise, and, um, and now she's, like, actually saying the word, like, Clark. She says the L in her own name now, which is crazy. It's a mistake that could cost you everything, I know. Is that the first time Clark felt betrayed? Nah, no way. <laughs> Oh, 
I have a vivid memory from when I was her age and I absolutely lost it when my parents cut up a banana instead of giving it to me whole. I love that you remember that. Um, so the, the chickens have been acting a little like, I don't want to say manic, but they've been, they've been really like <laughs> antsy with me. And I was like, I wonder what's going on with them. So I was doing a bunch of reading, um, trying to make sure that like, you know, they were getting everything that they need basically. And, um, it was like, oh, well recall, like make sure that if, um, if it's been a bit colder that you're providing them with some kind of protein because they might not be finding as many bugs as they normally would. And they really need protein to maintain mood. And like, you know, they're omnivores. They're supposed to have some kind of meat. And I was like, I haven't really, like I give them, I give them scrambled eggs sometimes, but not very often. So it was like, uh, if you have some like really high quality cat, like cat wet food, you can give them a little bit of that in a pinch. And I was like, I just got like crazy, like extremely high quality cat wet food recently. Cause again, I went on a, on a splurge being like, I'm going to spoil the shit out of all of my pets. So I was like, okay, I'll give them a little bit of, I'll give them a little bit of canned food from the cats. And they went wild absolutely wild for them yeah yeah i mean they eat their eggs in the wild um obviously you don't want to feed them raw eggs you don't want them to get a taste for their own eggs you don't want them to start pecking their own eggs so you always want to cook it before you give it to them but yeah th you can totally feed them eggs it's actually like really good for them um but yeah so <laughs> gave them some Gave them some chicken in a, in a tin and they were so, not chicken. No, not chicken. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. That would be fucked up. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but I specifically remember going through and making sure it wasn't chicken. <laughs> Holy shit. Can you imagine if I didn't correct that? Oh, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> so dark. It wasn't chicken, I swear. I know you can't tech here again. You can't technically feed your chickens chicken. I would rather not though. <laughs> um but yeah. I just kind of went on a deep dive of like reminding myself what all they can eat, what I should be giving them. All that kind of stuff but i've said this a few times before but i also just like i f i want them to have more space than they do i hate that i can't walk into their run like i can't clean up their run easily because the egg loo runs are like half my size right um so that's really inconvenient <laughs> so i would love to get them a bigger run but like my brain keeps being like, you don't even own this place and you're gonna like fuck up even more of the yard, right? <sighs> so I don't know what to do. Dukes feeds her pets to each other. No, it's not true. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we need a Dodger sized egg loo. I just need, I would love to just put the, cause we have, you know, the egg loo coop, which again, I think is, is less space than I would like for them to have. I would love for them to just like have more room to stretch out, but you know, whatever. For for right now, it's fine. The egg loo that we have is intended for four chickens. I only have three. I just stress out about it. Um, ideally, I would love to just get one of those like modular sort of fencing things, um, like a like a chicken run with like just sides that you can put wherever you need them, and then just plop the egg loo in there. But again, then they'll have like 
then yes, they'll have more space, but that's also way more of the yard that they're like consistently like scratching at, pecking at, etc. until we let them out into the rest of the yard, you know? Oh, they're just like, they're just like really, um, they're just really intense chicken coops. Uh, they're like fox proof, quote, end quote. Um, just like really tight, really secure, etc. I think Sam and I have both said that in the future, you know, when we have the room for it, fingers crossed that one day we have the room for it, but in the future we would love to just have like a, like a classic, like wooden coop with a lot of space for the chickens. But currently, um, my mother-in-law got this on sale and didn't really have the space to have chickens. So she sold it to me. So we got it for a really good deal. Um, and the chickens are fine. It's just, it's just a small amount of space is all. We actually started to transition our chickens to free range. That's awesome. Oh, I daydream all the time. I'm like, one of these, one of these days, I'm gonna have one of those places where like I use the chickens to turn my compost. <laughs> and, you know, maybe we'll have some like brambles on the property and then we'll get goats and we'll use the goats to get rid of the brambles and you know, like all our our the the property will feed the animals, which feeds the property. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Plastic coops are just easier to clean in general, I think. Like I can literally power wash this. I don't, I mean, I'm sure that you can also power wash a wooden one, but um, it's nice to be able to just like take the whole coop apart and just blast it with water and see really clearly that it's clean. Spray the whole thing with like lice stuff. Um, you know, that that's really nice. That is a really nice aspect of it is it's really obvious when it's dirty and it's really obvious when it's clean. Yeah, that's basically what we do. So we have the coop with a little run. Um, it's it's intended to keep them safe. Foxes are a huge problem out here, right? And foxes love a chicken. So um, we have the coop with the little run around like, when we first got them, it wasn't, I would let them out in the afternoons to kind of like roam. Um, now we let them out to roam around like 10 a.m., 9 or 10 a.m. Um, we really want to like section off the yard from, cause currently like where you pull in and drive and stuff is directly connected to the yard. And we want to like put up some kind of like a temporary fencing so that the chickens still have tons of area to walk around in, but they can't get to where the cars are or where the gate is and stuff. And we don't have to stress out every time we open the gate being like, I really hope the chickens aren't gonna just make a run for it. Cause Lord knows they're not scared of cars. <laughs> I pulled in the other day and uh, Mrs. Hudson was like standing in the car park and I honked at her and she just stood there like, what, you're gonna run me over? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> of course I would not. Oh, thank you very much, error person. That's very sweet. I did not, I did not kill Mrs. Hudson. That would be really fucked up. <laughs> Some sheep are not afraid of cars. Sheep are also, sorry sheep, but sheep are also very dumb. <laughs> I mean, chickens aren't super smart either, but like sheep are really dumb. <laughs> Sheep are big dumb. They really are too dumb to fear. <laughs> too dumb for fear. That's the dream. That's what all of us really want in the end is to be too dumb to fear things. Jossum, how are you?
Mrs. Hudson is one of my chickens. We have three chickens. Um, for most of the day, they have full run of our entire yard, which includes where we park the car and everything. Um, so we're discussing right now that we really want to like section off the yard yard and the, the car park gate area um, because the chickens are too dumb to be scared of cars. <laughs> so... I thought it was a person. It was not. No. I'm new here and I fully thought when you said Mrs. Hudson, you meant like a neighbor. No, no, no. It's a chicken. <laughs> it's a chicken. Oh, that's funny. Also, welcome. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the stream. <laughs> Also, it would be really nice if, like, the whole area outside of our front door and where our car is and stuff didn't constantly have chicken poop on it. Like, of all of the things associated with having chickens, they're so fun. We really enjoy seeing them and hanging out with them. I love just sitting outside with them. Um, they poop so much. They poop so much. And if you if you let them just go wherever they want, it's it's a problem. <laughs> it's just everywhere. So thank God for pressure washers, I guess. <laughs> How is it possible to poop so much? I don't understand. Literally, if they stop moving, I'm like, she's gonna poop, and then she does, every time. It's insane. You should collect it and make fertilizer. I don't have enough yard. Cause originally that's what I was doing is I was like, I'll just start like keeping it and then, you know, turn it over, like put some soil in there and turn it over occasionally. And you know, a year from now I'll have an incredible fertilizer. For what? This, is, this isn't my place. This yard is not big enough. And they poop so much. <laughs> they poop so much that a bucket was full within like, a couple of weeks and I was like this is not sustainable this is not sustainable <laughs> they're they're chickens we have three chickens and they're lovely and I adore them but my god any of your neighbors want poop I kind of doubt it <laughs> could could hit some people up I don't want ducks. Yeah, no, thank you. Birds in general are, are, you know, big time award winning shitters. So <laughs> I'm good with one bird in my life. <laughs> one type of bird is good for me. <laughs> Bird loved to sit on my laptop backwards and then crap on the screen. Incredible. <laughs> oh shit. Is she asleep? Oh, I think Sam might have put her to sleep. Incredible. Super dad, for real. She's been really into Sam lately. Like sometimes I'll walk into a room and she's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah? It's like, no, I want daddy. Okay, well, daddy's asleep, so why is daddy asleep? Because he hasn't slept yet. And this is always when he sleeps. He always sleeps at this time of the day. She's like. <sighs> <laughs> 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 
Okay, goddamn. But she does, oh my gosh, she's like, if she wakes up early enough, she just completely bypasses me now. Which is amazing, actually. I love it. Sam was like, it's my punishment. If I stay up too late, my punishment is now that Clark literally, the second she wakes up, just goes downstairs and goes into my office. <laughs> so this morning, she didn't even she didn't even try to wake me up. She just immediately went downstairs, went into Sam's office, was like, Daddy, what are you doing? Daddy, can I have a snack? Daddy, I'm hungry. Daddy, I need to go potty. And he was like, Okay, yep, all right. <laughs> so he was like, I'll, I'll get you set up back in your room. We'll grab your tablet and you can chill until Mella's green, the, the color-coded clock, until Mella's green and that's when it's time to get up, right? And she was like, okay. So he, le he left her in there. He came into our room. I had woken up during all of this and he was like, I was trying to give you some time to just chill. I was like, I appreciate that. So we hung out and talked for maybe five minutes before she came in and was like, I want to watch this in here. <laughs> We're like, all right. <laughs> the clock. She, she knows exactly what the clock is meant to do and just ignores it. Like, trying to explain to her, honey, the idea is you stay in your room until the clock turns green. No, for her, it's green means it's time for the day to begin, but I can hang out anywhere I want before that <laughs> so she'll like come into our room and be like can i lay in your bed and we'll be like sure whatever you know and she'll like climb into bed and then she'll like occasionally roll over and go is mellow green i'm like go check i guess <laughs> I just tuned in and I see a cat tunnel hooked on the door. Who are we keeping out? Um, we're trying to establish some boundaries with my toddler. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear her, but when she came in earlier, she went to open the door and it hit this. And she goes, mommy, I have trousers on. Can I come in please? <laughs> I was like, ah, she's, she's figured that part out that she needs to be fully clothed in order to come in here. <laughs> oh, you are right. Thank you for the... Here we go. Oh, it's so bright. Yuck. Wait a sec. much better it's a little grainy down here but someone's at the door she's gonna like Sam more now that you've had the rainbow straw incident being a parent is accidentally doing shit wrong all the time <laughs> doing your best to do everything right and still doing shit wrong um, so, you know, <laughs> I haven't read Harrow yet, Jossum, no. It's, um, uh, I ordered the, or I pre-ordered the paperback. So the paperback gets here in September sometime. So I haven't read it yet. But I, I bought, um, so the books I'm working on currently, Artemis Fowl number two, um, the second Greta Helsing book, And six of crows. I think Sam's phone is dead. One sec, be right back.
Okay. Guess what? <laughs> A thing that is excited to, exciting to exactly like three people, and they're all in this house. <laughs> um. Our fucking BT router finally showed up. So, uh, so <laughs> some BT guys showed up uh, yesterday and they were like, hey, hey, we're here to install your router. And I was like, we haven't, the router hasn't shown up yet. And they were like, okay. <laughs> Nothing's ever easy with this fucking company. So they were like, okay, well, we'll call the office and see like when it's supposed to get here. I was like, okay. So they called and called and called and they were like, well, we couldn't get through to anybody who would be able to tell us if it's on the way or not. Um, so I guess wait a few days and if it shows up then make an appointment with us again and if it doesn't show up then chase it up we were like great <laughs> wonderful it also didn't help that like i didn't know that they were showing it. like we didn't know that there was an appointment for that day they just showed up and i was like i'm gonna be honest with you this house is a fucking disaster. <laughs> the technician was like, don't worry. You should see my house. I was like, nice. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Way to make me feel better. Did that happen in the US? What, technicians just showing up? No. <laughs> no way. If, like, every technician that I've gotten as an adult in in recent memory um you get like some kind of a thing that's like hey um tomorrow we have an appointment blah 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 you would probably get a call like an hour before they're gonna get here like there's so many opportunities to be like hey i actually didn't even know about this <laughs> Anyways, what are you gonna do? Oh, well the, te um, the technician that showed up was a technician for us earlier. So I recognized him. It's not like he showed up and I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I mean, we've had a business router set up before, so. It doesn't take very long, but you have to have the fucking router in order to do it. Oh, it's a Verum hoodie for the, the like, Arcadum series stuff. I'm not looking forward to moving and having to set up internet again. At least I don't need business level internet like you guys. It's got to be a nightmare. You, it's so weird because they insist that they will insist that if you are getting business internet, you are priority, and you're get and everything's happening as fast as possible, and you have twenty four seven support and blah 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 blah. It is at least in our situation, it is all bullshit. <laughs> It's wild, but what are you gonna do? Okay, ready for some ASMR. A 
little better. better. Yeah. <laughs> ah. I hope you up. chicken on the mic. <laughs> what else is going on over here? Not much, really. I am excited for Endwalker, of course. Still enjoy drawing. The last drawing stream I caught was with Massey drawing each other's D and D characters. We um we did a stream because I got I got a little drawing tablet that I've been using. Um, so we did a stream setting that up and making sure that that worked well. Uh, my current barrier with that is that I need it's just a cable. We might even have the cable that I need, but um, I can't seem to successfully get my two monitors and the drawing tablet to all get re like recognized by the PC at the same time. Um, Sam has struggled with that kind of stuff before, so I'm sure that he could sort it out. I just hate asking him for help with things if it's not super necessary. So, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we did, we did a stream that was like testing that out um, and I've been drawing with it, but it's, it's a pain like swapping cables over and stuff. So I need to just get the right cable and sort it out. I still need to do the seasonal event. It's really short in, in uh, 14. It's really, really short. Yeah. Uh, and I have yet to see a single person look cool on this mount, which is my favorite type of mount. <laughs> I, I look so, my character looks so stupid on this mount. It's incredible. I know, I would love that. Yeah, let's do a drawing stream. I think that's the vibe they're going for. Yeah, I pulled out, um, while we were doing it, I pulled out the Easter egg mount because that is by far the mount that I look the dumbest on. And I was like, yeah, these are the, if, if it's not these vibes, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. There's so many people now who are um, hopping into the game from scratch. I feel like there's more people than ever that you can watch um doing it from the beginning which is pretty cool i got it and forgot to even try it so when you're sitting on it normally your legs are kind of bent like it almost looks like you're lounging on a on a like a throne but the second that it starts moving you like <laughs> you pose on it like blade or something like it's so weird just finished Realm Reborn a day or two ago. There's so much content. It's beautiful. There's so much content to get through. Yeah, you have so much that you can do in the game if you're just getting started now. I mean, we were looking at number of days subscribed for me, which was like 
2,300 and something crazy. <laughs> um, which I don't even know how that's possible, but it's fine. Uh, and um, even then, there's so much shit that I haven't done in that game, you know? For reference, I, uh, Sam and I started playing before Heaven's Word came out, so when it was still just Realm Reborn. Yeah, the Hildebrand quests are amazing, and I really wish that they had voice acting, but what are you gonna do? <sighs> something something free trial. Something something. I'm powering through the first bit to get to the fun stuff, but it's hard, y'all. I always say this, but I don't remember feeling like the Realm Reborn storyline was as much of a slog as everyone kind of unanimously agrees that it is. Um, but look, that many people can't be wrong. <laughs> it's got, that shit must be super slow and I just didn't notice. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing, right? Is I don't think that my opinion on pacing in an MMO holds any weight whatsoever, because as many of you know, I'm not an MMO person. I don't enjoy them very much. This is literally the only MMO that I play and have played. I've never played an MMO this long. Like it's, <laughs> um, you know, so for me, there's just something special about this game in comparison to every other MMO that I've tried. And I don't know why, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I think like, because it, it feels from the get go, it just felt so much less daunting. Um, I like that if you want to, you can kind of just treat it like an RPG, you know? Like you play and then you hit a dungeon, you do the dungeon and then you do more story and then the story leads you to another dungeon. You do the dungeon and then there's, and then there's more story and then there's a boss fight and then there's, you know, like I think that it might be a bit more accessible to people who are more used to like an RPG format than, than kind of like the openness of an MMO, which is why it took me so long to get to a lot of the other stuff that was optional because um, it felt like there was too much choice for me at first, but it was easy to just focus on the story, you know? Oh, I don't think that I could say that I converted Jesse. I tried to get him to play it for years and years and years and years, and he would play for a couple minutes and then be like, eh and play a little bit and then eh. And then he finally like actually played it. And I don't know what the catalyst was for him to finally actually play it, but I wouldn't say that it's me necessarily. I would say that there were enough of us, there were enough people being like, you gotta give this game a proper chance, you know? It just took a global pandemic, yeah. You know? And now he's got like a max level character of every class or some crazy shit like that.
I kind of did that with Hollow Knight. The thing that finally got me into it was just desperately wanting a game I could explore in. It's literally perfect for that. That's true. Yeah, it's a perfect game for that. Mossbag did such an interesting video that I watched. It's one of his newer videos that's like um, comparing the new Ori game and Hollow Knight because when the new Ori game came out, everybody was like, ugh, you can tell that they like copied so much about Hollow Knight in order to make this game. And he does kind of like a deep dive into the things that people say were copied or are similar um what the devs have said uh like all of this other sort of stuff comparing um you know talking about how hollow knight also took lots of stuff from other games and like it it was really interesting i thought it was really well done if you like both of those games um you should you should watch that video it's really well done Oh, I was saying earlier that my husband and I finally played, um, there's a series of games called Exit the Game. I think the other one that I have is still in here. Yeah. These. So this is the other one that I got, which is uh, almost expert. I'm such a fool. Um, but they're basically like escape room board games. So we did one of these that I think was called the Abandoned Cabin, and this one's called the Forbidden Castle. Um, but yeah. Hollow Knight is my favorite game. To the person who asked if it's good. It's my favorite game ever. I highly recommend. Um, it is difficult in some ways. It leans very heavily on exploration. Um, at the start of the game, you don't have a map. You're just walking around blind. Uh, so the start of the game can be really frustrating for people if you don't enjoy like exploration in games. Um, but uh, it's so it's such a clean game. It's so fun. It's beautiful. The music's incredible. So. Seems cool, just not my type of game. That's fair. Yeah. What would you recommend instead of Hollow Knight if you have trouble with bugs? Oh, interesting. Um, I mean, I would say that Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania. So a lot of the elements that that um, are utilized in that game, which Again, I didn't realize until I watched this moss bag video that they just did that the, the creators of the game never intended on making a Metroidvania, which I find really interesting. But um, if you want games that are like, that are really exploration based, um, that have really clean combat, or at the very least like interesting combat, um, it's like a huge map. Uh, we enjoyed Bloodstained, that was pretty good. Um, there's another one, what was, what was that game called? I keep wanting to say Heresy, but that's not it. <sighs> what was that game called? You guys will have Blasphemous. I was like, somebody in chat's probably got it by now. Blasphemous, um, we really liked, but it, that one's really dark. It's a bit grotesque. Um, there's a, there's a lot of games, if you look up Metroidvanias, uh, there's a lot of games that are like that kind of vibe. Ori, people always recommend Ori for that, and Ori is too different, <laughs> despite the fact that they get compared all the time. It's too different from Hollow Knight for me to feel like they're very similar at all. I think there are so many games that we've played that are way more like Hollow Knight than Ori is. Oh, <gasps> 
Yeah, I bought Grime. I still haven't played it, but I did buy it. Yeah, Ordi, I would say like, yeah, there's a map and, and you can like, you know, backtrack to find things and whatever. But generally it's, it's pretty linear. Whereas Hollow Knight is not. <laughs> Oh, Dead Cells. Dead Cells is very fun. It's more of a roguelite, but it's very fun. Yeah, we have Grime and Eldest Souls that we still haven't tried. Owlboy was great, yeah. Owlboy felt more like an RPG to me. I have tried Noita. I didn't like it at all, <laughs> unfortunately. People, everybody that I knew was like, uh, everybody that I knew that liked games similar to me was obsessed with that game. And every time I've played it, I've just walked away feeling so unsatisfied and annoyed. <laughs> so I don't play it. Children of Morta, also fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we gotta get through Boyfriend Dungeon, baby. We gotta get through that. Also, we're not we're not playing it yet, but just as a heads up, if we could avoid like any of the drama that's been going around about Boyfriend Dungeon, that would be great. Hi, my love. What are you doing? I'm the wet. The wet? You need to go potty. Are you sure? Let's take them off. Okay, hold on, hold on. Don't take them off now! <laughs>
Sorry for that abrupt stop. I decided to go potty because <laughs> because uh, I had to suddenly go to BRB because my child decided to declothe in my room. <laughs> Everything's sorted. Um, we're in one of those situations where like she was so chill and we had a lovely morning together and then the second i gave her to sam she's now just like <laughs> stink eyeing everything and yelling about everything and he's like god she's a nightmare today and i was like she was fine <laughs> until now but it's because she's tired so what are you gonna do i'm helping if i can but it's my it's my stream time cheers Speaking of, yo, what should we, what should we do for um, study hall tonight? Should we try to start working on the mushroom? I 
I think that might be fine. Someone stole her straw, I know. That's also a problem. Yeah, yeah, the mushroom jar, I think, is what we had talked about working on instead of the quilt. And then I can do the quilt next. Okay, yeah, let's start working on the mushroom jar. That'll be fun. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't know what that project is, I basically have a glass like jam jar um, that's a really nice shape and then a bunch of clay. And um, I s saw somebody, I should find, I should figure out who they are, like double check who it is um, before I stream so that I can properly like say, I got this idea from so-and-so. But um, the, the like base, like glass part of the jar you sculpt to look like the bottom of a mushroom and then the top part that you know the the lid <laughs> the top part of the jar the lid um you turn into the mushroom cap and so it's just like this cute sculpted mushroom but it unscrews and you can put things in it so it's like a cute little hidey hole So that's the idea. I haven't done any like proper sculpting in maybe seven or eight years. So actually longer than that, nine years. So it's probably gonna be really rough, but it'll be fun to try. And the bottom part at least, we won't have to build up um, we won't have to like create like a shape to sculpt on top of like we will have to for the lid. Um, so the bottom part, I think that we can get started on pretty easily. the volume level on the music okay? <gasps> Taking today off to recover from Mai Tai? Oh my god. Well, thank you for the 61 months. Someone was saying that they've been playing a lot of Slay the Spire. That's like yesterday in classic Wednesday fashion. There were so many things I wanted to get done. And I literally just, for most of the morning, just sat and played Slay the Spire <laughs> almost the entire morning. Hi, Brett. How are you, bud? Couple weeks in, still on normie schedule. Oh my god, I'm so proud of you. God damn. Uh, Brett Ultimus in chat is a lovely friend of the show and also our DM for misdemeanor. And uh, newly indoctrinated into the normie schedule, which I have been on for years now. So, welcome. The, the water is tepid. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm just hearing my kid just fucking lose it over everything. Poor Sam. What is a normie schedule? Oh, 
going to bed at midnight-ish and getting up when it's still morning, <laughs> I would say counts as a normie schedule. <laughs> right? No, for re the straw set her off. She was fine until the straw. I feel very responsible for this. <laughs> might say it's the straw that broke the camel's back. Don't. <laughs> I'm going to bed at 12 and the sun wakes me up at 7.50. We're on the same schedule, you and I. How does that feel? You're on the same schedule as a mom. <laughs> Feels good, honestly, I'm glad. Something weird, you think? Yeah. yeah, sometimes that happens, doesn't it? There you go, baby. Hi, You're welcome. I love you. Can you close my door for me? Thank you, darling. Her hair is super long. It is, yeah. Super long. Poor Bubba. I'm perma cursed to wake up at five or earlier every day. That's my dad. My dad, my entire life, has woken up between 4 and 5 a.m. every single day. I don't know why. I don't think he knows why. Oh, I also live by the beach, so after I work, I can just drive over and swim for a bit. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's definitely a farmer thing. I mean, he used to... He would wake up really, really early when he was a kid. Um, because of just the way that their house ran. And then... Uh, yeah. On the farm, everybody was up by like 5 or 6 a.m., including me. Um, and he's said before that now, like, it's rare for him to be able to sleep any later than 5. Some days it happens, but... If his brain, because he's like got all of these different like pain sort of zones, if his brain wakes him up at his normal time, it's almost impossible for him to go back to sleep because his body's like, I hurt, let's get up, let's take some medication, you know? Um, so it's he's continued to get up around that time because it's like almost impossible for him to go back to sleep. As a kid, I used to wake up at 5.30 a.m. I kind of miss that sometimes. Yeah, I easily, easily woke up at 6 a.m. for my whole childhood. <laughs> Weird.
I never woke up early. Man. I took the day off work today and I only slept in 30 minutes. This is like when I told Sam on my birthday, I want to sleep in and he was like, okay. And I still woke up at seven and came downstairs and he was like, why are you awake? <sighs> it is starting to feel like autumn, I agree. I don't have specific coffee grinder recommendations, but um, it's generally agreed that the best type of grinder that you can get is a burr grinder, um, B-U-R-R. -R. There are lots of different types with like various um, cost points, price points. So uh, if you want a really good grinder, try looking for a burr grinder. Autumn is my favorite season as well. Probably not super surprisingly. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, Sam and I talk about revenge bedtime procrastination all the time because the second that we like found out about that term, we were like, it's you. <laughs> like, that is Sam. The idea of it is that like, if you feel that you generally have, like don't have very much control over your life, um, you will put off going to bed as long as possible because that's the only time that you have control. So for Sam, he feels like any time that he's awake, generally he has to be a parent or he has to stream, right? So once his stream is done and Clark is still asleep, there's some part of his brain that's like, I'm in control now, right? Like this is my time and he won't go to bed. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a thing. It's called revenge bedtime procrastination. That's me right now. <laughs> Yeah, that is not me at all. That's not me at all. I love going to bed. I love sleeping. <laughs> Once it's like midnight-ish, I'm like, time to get into bed. Or sometimes, sometimes I'll climb into bed and Sam will be like, Sam will come upstairs to ask me if I want to eat dinner. <laughs> He'll be like, I'm going to order something to eat. Are you in bed already? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you know it's 9.30? <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, my brain just told me to get in bed, so I go to bed. <laughs> you know, literally the opposite. <laughs> but I found that, like, sometimes... Sometimes how much I sleep is definitely a stress thing. If I find that while I'm awake, I'm just thinking about stuff that like upsets or stresses me out, I'll just go to bed. And just be like, I don't, I don't wanna be sitting here thinking about this anymore. I'm just gonna go to sleep. <laughs> so it's not always good. It's not always just like, ah, oh, life is so nice. I'm just gonna go sleep now. <laughs> Can you actually sleep at 9.30? Totally. Absolutely. Before I had Clark, I was a nap queen. I would fall asleep any time of day, anywhere. Sam would find me like under the couch and shit just asleep. Um, it, yeah, I can't do that really anymore because during the daytime, like Sam, either I'm a mom 
and it's a toddler, so it's not like I can be like, you watch yourself, I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> uh, I'm either hanging out with Clark or I'm streaming. Um, so I still have this gift. I can still sometimes put Clark to bed and then be like, well, I'm falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. Once the age a child becomes more self-sufficient, I mean, it depends on the kid. Clark's pretty independent, um, but sh like in terms of like what she can do, she's independent, but she is in terms of interaction, she is a quality time kid. So there are some kids that like from an early age, you can tell they're fine on their own. They want to chill by themselves or they want to parallel play. They want you around, but they are going to do their own thing and you do your own thing, right? Like who knows? Um, Clark is whatever the opposite is of that. If she's watching something, she, she feels more at ease if she knows that you're watching it together or like, if there's something that she's basically just doing by herself, she wants you to like sit and watch or like she she wants the quality time. She wants it to be a group activity, even if it is not intrinsically a group activity, um, which is very sweet. Uh, but it means that establishing those moments where it's like, I really need a second by myself, right? Like I really <laughs> like the nice version of, I need you to leave me alone for a minute. Um, is hard for her. So that's something that we've been working on is like, it's okay to hang out by yourself. It's good to hang out by yourself sometimes, right? Uh, but she just really loves, she loves spending time with people, um, which is very sweet. So the moments when she wants to just kind of chill, I really take advantage of. <laughs> there, are, there are those rare days where she just like sits on the couch and is like, mommy, can I just watch TV? And it's so rare for her to want to just sit and watch TV and not do anything that I'm, that if that's what she asks to do, I'm kind of like, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Most of the time, even if we turn on the TV, she's like, cool, now that the TV's on, let's play hide and seek. And then here's what you're gonna do. You're the robber and you're gonna steal that and then I'm gonna chase you. But where's my whistle? Can we find my whistle? I think it's upstairs. Let's go to my room. Oh my gosh, mommy, can we play superheroes? Let's play superheroes. And then we'll do the animal balancing game, but as the superheroes. No, mommy, your name isn't mommy. Your name is super mommy, <laughs> right? Like it's, it's normally high octane. <laughs> Um, so if it's, if it's one of the days where, where she's like, can I just watch TV? There's no guilt. <laughs> There's no guilt up here being like, yup. <laughs> I'm exhausted just listening to it. Yeah. So we've been trying to like encourage more solo play and like individual stuff, but it's hard for, for a kid that really, like, gets their energy and their joy out of interaction, you know? So, trying to balance, like, encouraging that it's okay to be alone, but also trying to give your kid what they need, because all kids are different, and if we're acknowledging, like, okay, our kid really enjoys and and loves like quality time with us trying to make sure that we give her a lot of that as well ah <sighs> she is very extroverted yeah she, again she's the one who like consistently brings up that there's a kid at preschool that she has asked multiple times to be her friend and this kid is like no like <laughs> clark feels so like slighted about it <laughs> It's so funny to me.
<laughs> yeah, just waiting. Just waiting for the day that she's like, we're best friends now. <laughs> How does she cope with the rejection? I mean, I'm not there in the moment. I'm not at preschool. The parents aren't allowed to be at the preschool. Um, but, you know... I always try to follow it up. If she brings it up like, I asked so-and-so to be my friend and she said no. I always try to be like, well, honey, not everybody's always gonna wanna be our friend and not everybody's always gonna like us, but you have lots of really great friends, don't you? And she'll be like, yeah. <laughs> Have you met any of the parents of Clark's friends? Yes. So Clark has had a play date at the park um, with her best friend, quote unquote. And uh, we've met her best friend's parents uh, and they are mega nerds, which was great. Uh, and then um, there's another kid that she's gotten really close with and I've met that kid's dad a few times and they are like the sweetest people I've ever met in my life. So I'm like, Honey, if you want to keep hanging out with these two kids, uh, these two sets of parents are pinging all the right things for my brain. These ones play D&D &D and do historical reenactments, and this one is just a sweetie pie. So, like, bo bo both of these are good. about the kid she forgot the name of no idea he doesn't exist to her he isn't real as far as she's concerned <laughs> would you stop her from being a friend with a kid if their parents weren't as nice no of course not but if I have to spend time with parents and the parents of my kids' best friends happen to be great. That's a win-win. She violent death to that kid. <laughs> this cream makes me crave coffee more than usual and I usually really want coffee. I had a I had a pretty strong coffee this morning because I was having trouble waking up or I was having trouble like being alert and Clark wanted to play a lot so I was like I need a coffee and then uh, I just made a single shot thing for Sam and I just now like before stream started. Cold brew is great, yeah. It's easier on your tummy. It's refreshing. It's normally stronger. <laughs> Hi, Tally. I'm sorry you're having a bad day. Big hugs. meaning to hold on I'm gonna make a note for myself um I keep meaning to uh I want to send a bunch of coffee to Jesse's office Kristen and them. Yeah, Cox Towers. <laughs> Have you ever worked at a at a coffee shop? Um, only for like a couple of days. I helped out before, but I haven't properly like worked at one now. Sam has. Sam was a barista for a long time. 
but Sam's been everything, you know. <laughs> what happened for you to work a couple days in a coffee shop? Um, I was really close with a lady who owned a coffee shop. And I said that I was gonna apply for a job uh, at a coffee shop. And she was like, do you want me to like, if, if you're down to like sign paperwork, if you wanna try working at my coffee shop for a couple of days and see how you get on and if you like it, um, then that would be great. And I was like, yeah, I would love that. So I worked at her coffee shop for a couple of days when I was in college. Oh, the Intel unboxing isn't embarrassing anymore. <laughs> because they kept trying to sponsor me because of what a shit show that unboxing was. It was that iconic. <laughs> so, you know, in the end it worked out for me. My wife is home after being gone for two weeks. It's the longest we've been apart in eight years. Thanks, Dukes and Chat, for the comfy place to chill while she was away. Oh, big hugs to your wife. <sighs> All right. Shall we start playing? Shall we hop into the game? We still we still have a it feels like about half of the game to go. Um again, as a reminder, so we're gonna we're gonna be playing some more boyfriend dungeon. There's been a little a little bit of drama surrounding this game recently. Um nothing that in any way makes me not want to play it anymore. Um just having to do with some of the content in the game. We have our warnings list for a reason. Uh if you wanna see what's going on with it, you can look it up. But um, please pay attention to the warnings list. As always with any game that we play, please double check the warnings list. Make sure that you are comfortable with the content that's going to be in the game. Um, we have no backseating, no spoilsies. I don't want to know anything that's going to happen in the game that I haven't seen yet or how to play the game, etc. But you can absolutely talk about that in our spoiler void in, in Discord. So please utilize that. Backseating. Oops! No, backseating allowed. No! There we go. <laughs> Octo stored the negative energy and used it to smoke people in the Guilty Gear tournament last night. He was awesome. I'm delighted to hear it. Uh, yeah, the color is called Molten Metal by Barry M. This color. Hell yeah. I'll always support my boy Octo. I miss him. I need to hang out with him soon. Ba 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 
Please control her with this, right? Um, so to give you just like a quick blurb on what this game is, uh, this is a modern day world where, um, some people can just turn into weapons and it's totally acknowledged and normal. <laughs> uh, and there are dungeons that pop up that if you go inside of them, uh, you face your fears inside of them essentially. So we play a person who is really like um, kind of socially awkward. We have a lot of anxiety, um, don't have a lot of friends. I've never been on a date, blah, blah, blah. And our cousin Jesse encourages us to move out to a new town to where he lives and um, meet some new people. And so the game is like you meeting new people and potentially dating them. But it's also the roguelite element of the game is you using their weapon forms um uh inside of these dungeons to try and like become a more confident person basically yeah jesse cox our cousin <laughs> oh god i forgot that every time you open the the game any text that you haven't responded to um Look, we have a Kigu in this game. It's very good. Um, oh. oh! We can build things that we couldn't build before. Oh my. Oh my. Yeah, now I can be a cultist. Like I've always wanted. <laughs> Question mark. Um, okay. Uh, he's really into fish now. It's weird I don't know your name. It's Boba Butt. We found a cat and the cat can turn into a weapon. And so we've been texting with the cat's owner, but we haven't met them yet. I'm Tank, a personal trainer. Nice to meet you or whatever. I'm letting Pocket out. Not sure where he's going, but he didn't eat breakfast. So he's probably hungry. Great. I love you too, Jessup. Um, okay. So for people who have played this game before, if you want to know uh like relationships currently valeria i've been on a ton of dates with we made out or boned who knows it was a fade to black um sunder we have left on read seven we've gone on some dates with uh but eh, like I, I would love to play again and actually pursue seven but it hasn't it hasn't really gone anywhere isaac it's the same sort of thing where isaac's like isaac seems super cool i would love to really pursue his story but i'm not really doing it in this run um, that's my mom. Uh, Eric sucks. Uh, so we leave him on read. Uh, Pocket. Uh, this is Pocket is the cat, apparently, and Tank is the owner. Again, I've never met that person. Sawyer uh, is basically treated like a sibling <laughs> in this game. We're teaching them how to how to cook and stuff. And Jonah, uh, apparently, we met that one day and then he was like, I'm going to be gone forever. Bye. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. So we completed the new dungeon. So what's, so what's the new, new dungeon? Date who? Who is that a date with? I don't understand. 
There's the gem. Hmm. Yeah, we got we found a kigu. And we built it. I'm kind of assuming that's Isaac's house. Oh! There's a mansion date. But with who? Or are these just like dates with anyone? There's nothing specific to do right now. How interesting. What is this? You arrive just as a hearse drives away. It seems someone died. A young person stares down the street Goodbye. after it. Until next time, Alice. Farewell. Uh, I, I don't know this person. I don't know this person. Why would I talk to them? It seems someone's died. There's like tape around. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess if I'm, a, if I'm sure that someone died here, I guess. Don't talk about her. You didn't know her. That's fair, oh, I didn't. it's you. Me? Huh. Why did you come here? You know me? Never mind that right now. Answer me. Why did you come here? I'm just exploring the town. They purse their lips, eyes no, dark. No, I meant Verona Beach. You're the cause of all this, you know. What? The monsters, the universe thrown out of balance. What? If it weren't for you... Maybe Alice would still be alive. What the fuck? Who are you? What? The <laughs> their bird is their weapon? Okay, this is fucking tight. Maybe I Wait. should just end you and see if status quo returns. Or they combined into a weapon? That's way weirder. They seem serious. This seems like an important decision. Your life is on the line. What the fuck? This was listed as a date. <laughs> what the fuck? Enticing temptation. <laughs> Almost what? Sexual. The scythe gleams hungrily at your urging as if wetted. There's a moment of silence as a breeze passes between you. Fine. I can't just kill a random person I just met. <laughs> I guess. Even you. Okay. Pretty human. Hush. I'm a pretty human. You heard the bird. Uncertainty passes over so, their features. Why? why did you come to Rowan? Who Beach? are you? <laughs> Who even are you? I'm Rowan. My threat wasn't personal, I assure you. But I suppose I would also feel angry in your situation, though I hadn't expected you to respond the way you did. I must remember that you are unpredictable, perhaps more dangerous than I thought. Oh, well. The reason you came to Verona Beach doesn't particularly matter. What? My grandmother is gone either way, and you're here now. We'll have to survive somehow, in spite of your chaos. What chaos? You know, dungeons everywhere. Creatures running amok. I was told that's normal, Rowan. Someone's violating the laws of nature. There's a wrongness rippling. I was told this is normal. Everyone's acting like it's normal except you. You've been seeing weapons damaged, haven't you? It's oh. a pattern of evil intent. Oh. Only a witch of very high caliber can hope to make things right again. Me? <laughs> and I should get back to it. Oh, you. That's what Alice would have wanted. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> you. Are you a witch? They don't acknowledge your question. They turn goodbye. away. Oh, goodbye. They disappear into the house, leaving you alone on the street. Okay. What the fuck? Are you gonna text me? Nope. I'm so confused. Huh. 
Huh. What a good, good date, everybody. <laughs> really good date. I loved that for us. I guess, like... Um... We could go back into the dungeon and, like, max these out a bit. Because currently, I don't have anything to do with multiple weapons. Okay, what's this? Oh, you find Pocket sitting outside Bravura. It seems closed for the afternoon. The music. As soon as you arrive, he stands and walks up to meet you. Pocket rubs his head against the bottom of your legs. God, we're on such good terms with this fucking cat. He puts his front paws on your legs, looking up into your face. What is it, boy? He suddenly darts around you, pawing you playfully, as if in a game of tag. He runs toward the restaurant, and you notice something hanging from his mouth. Your wallet! Hey! He pushes his way into the restaurant. How did he know it would be unlocked? You follow him, determined to get your wallet back. You're alone in the restaurant, except a tired-looking man you assume is the owner. Hello, can I help you? Are you single? Did you see a cat? Mm -mm. No, certainly not. This is an eating establishment. See your wallet on the floor of the restaurant. You go to pick it up and all the money is still inside. A clamor from the kitchen. Something's gone awry. Now what? I'm pretty sure it's a cat. Pocket runs past a giant fish hanging out of his mouth. I suppose we should call animal control. He's already out the door. <laughs> Jesus, just run. Just run after the cat. I'm running after the cat. <laughs> at the door. You don't see Pocket anywhere. So you head home? After just a block, you hear happy meowing. You find Pocket enjoying his fish. Love rank three, bitch. Finishers knock enemies back further. He looks like he saved half of it for you untouched. I'm gonna eat it. You find yourself salivating at the sight. Pocket purrs loudly like a little engine. I mean, I'm gonna cook it, right? Game? I'm gonna cook it at least, right? Would you like to offer a gift? Oh, I don't think I have anything for him. Yeah, I don't have a gift. He freezes, his ears flatten against his head, a growl starts in his throat. Oh, <gasps> it's this cat. The cat from before stalks into view, eyes fixed on Pocket. It walks up and starts eating Pocket's fish. Pocket doesn't seem to know how to react to this fish thief. He's frozen, eyes wide. Hmm. Our fish. Pocket puffs up his chest with new bravery. Pocket leaps to the cat's throat. The two become a writhing mass of fur and claws. It's quickly clear. Pocket is outmatched. Pocket is nearly pinned, but squirms free and one runs away at full tilt. The street cat sits down and preens, cleaning its claws free of orange fur. Shoo it away. Cat flicks her tail with a hiss and stalks away. You head home. Aw, man. A scrap of paper has been slipped into your window from outside. Oh my god, is this an ARG? What the fuck? I'm taking a picture, just in case. The paper is thick and strong as if torn from an old book. It has a series of numbers and markings on it. Some are upside down. Rotation cipher? Try matching the most common numbers to common letters and working backwards. You work at it for a while. Either there's not enough vowels or too many Zs and Ys. Study it for a while, but you aren't sure how to use this information helpfully. You set the puzzle aside for now, itching for a more physical challenge. It looks like another beautiful California day outside. I know, I'm sorry. Dude, what happened? It looks like he got beat up. There was another cat. Well, obviously. He's gonna do what he wants, I guess. I just hope he's more careful. I'm glad we're not getting blamed. That's nice.
Okay, I think... I think we go back into the dung. Yeah. I think we go back into the dungo. Sure, let's start with pocket. From the first floor, baby. Let's go. We gotta level up some weapons. The fear of intimacy. That's true, these wep this weapon does match my outfit. Using a claw weapon. This weapon is a cat, to be fair, but yeah, we're using a claw weapon and wearing a Kigurumi. <laughs> but to be fair, since the Kigurumi was made in this game, uh, I have not worn anything else. Ow. Basically trying to get our ranks up with like these weapons. God, the difference between doing these rooms the first time and now is actually nuts. <laughs> I just accepted we were walking around as a fox. <laughs> yeah, it's a Kigurumi. So there's like a bunch of clothes that you can unlock in this game, um, but you have to craft them. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Pocket eyes the heart balloons suspiciously. They're fun to hunt. You bat at a balloon and it flies away. Pocket widens his eyes, impressed. He rubs his head hesitantly against your shin. I don't have anything for you. I'm sorry. You reach down to pet him, but he transforms, dodging your affection. Fair enough. Yeah, let's max him out. Thing I hear someone in here. But it's just noises in the music and the game. Bug princess. Okay. back to that other yeah you know the, the classic game villain that's just a hand meow. Meow. pocket curls up and falls asleep <laughs> your life is gross you sent me that dream Great, so now he'll be maxed out for sure. And we can swap weapons. Should probably do Valyria next. Since she's who I've like, focused on the most in this game. Yeah, change weapon. remember how her weapon works. Oh no! just in case. Ah! Not as intuitive as uh, the cat claws, to be honest. But still fast, so it's a bit easier of a transition. Now, what have we here? Oh, uh, do I have anything that she'd like? I 
Maybe, also maybe. Oh, nice, hell yeah. So dramatic, perfect for a night on the town, can't huh? wait. This bar has all the whiskeys, a girl could get used to this. She slides behind the bar, pours a double shot for herself and raises an eyebrow at you. Sure, why not? Honestly, I could think of many reasons, but let's pretend we're drunken yeah. masters. She pours you a drink and sips her own. Every muscle of her face relaxes in pleasure. Just kidding. Drunken masters were always hand to hand. No sharp edges. I'm too dangerous for stumbling around. I wouldn't want to hurt you after all. She becomes serious. Um... Unless I have to, that is. You know, to protect my secrets. Uh. <laughs> she winks and saunters away as a weapon? Okay. I wouldn't want to hurt you, unless I have to. <laughs> oh, okay. That's healthy, that's fine. Pretty sure I already know all of your secrets, but that's okay. Yo, we maxed her out so easily. Okay, wait, change weapon. Um, oh my gosh. I guess let's do seven. No, because that character actually does have, like, secrets that could, <laughs> you know, get her killed. So <laughs> that's why I'm taking it more seriously. Like, I think she kind of means that. What do you think? Am I more of a solid or a stripe? Oh, we've already done this. I said solid last time. I can't remember if it was the right thing to say. I have cleared this dungeon, yeah, but um, most of my weapons still had a little bit left to, in order to max out and go on dates. So we're back in trying to max people out. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I did say solid last time. <laughs> Yay! Okay, let's go. But sure, it has stripes. That's exactly why I said solid the first time. <laughs> No, you don't date the cat. Oh my goodness. But you hang out with the cat. Should we keep it? Whew, okay.
Oh, challenge, let's go. are great. Futurist? I hope this isn't stealing. I wouldn't worry about the stealing so much as all of the things we're breaking, if we're gonna say that there are, like, consequences to what we're doing in this world. <laughs> Ugh, that's happened twice now. Something, something's gotten stuck at that exact spot. Probably not. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've talked about that before. The combat is definitely not like, like, um, the, the way that you play the game is mostly the same, regardless of like which weapon you're using and stuff. Like they do upgrade, they get like passives and things, but, um, Generally, like, this is a dating sim with roguelite elements, and the dating sim is what is more important, I would say. <laughs> like, the this part of the game is really fun. I enjoy it. It's not, like, super in-depth or nuanced, um, but it's fun. Dozen red roses. Seven, I'm still in the dungeon, my dude. money. Hmm. Uh. Mm -mm. Okay. If I've seen the interaction before, I'm just kind of speeding through it. Hope you guys don't mind. How many? Oh. We're in the deeps now. Whoa! 
I'll come back to that. Inner demons want a duel. That is what they tell me. Your form is improving. Thank you. I wonder if I can break a thou. Isaac is a bit intense. I mean, I haven't pursued Isaac at all. Cowboy hat, hell yeah. Yeah, I just like using all of the weapons. We'll give it a good home. The money? Yeah, we will. Or rather, I will. You're already a millionaire, Isaac. <laughs> a halo? Leather gloves? Goodness gracious. It's very worth it to come back through these dungeons. Hmm. This bar won't have the best wines. Perhaps we can find a digestif. He pulls a bottle out from some crevice under the bar. Here's a lovely cardamaro. Not an amaro at all, you see, but a wine aperitif with blessed thistle. Hmm? I do wonder what cocktails an expert bartender might put it into. Uh, let's make one. There's the boldness I admire. Let's see what we can do. He pulls out an assortment of liquors and liqueurs. Together, you select a few. There's no stirring spoon? Use me to stir it? Isaac, you stir it and have a taste. You almost spit it out. It's like someone poured cough syrup into a handful of dirt. Well, we tried. In retrospect, a waste of fine Katamaro, but we learned in the process. Let's leave the bartending to the bartenders, shall we? Sure. Oh, cufflinks? Hell yeah. My tailor will adore me for using these, thank you. No prob. I don't remember this. I don't remember ever seeing this enemy. These like dancing speakers or jumping speakers, I should say.
Okay, I think it's just Sawyer now, who I am not good with. Let's go, kiddo. Guys, I'm still in the dungeon. Mystery novel. Lucky earrings. God, we're finding all kinds of shit we didn't find last time. I wonder if I should go back into the other dungeon again. Oops! Didn't heal. Whoopsie doodle. I leveled up everybody except Sawyer. Sawyer, I'm sorry. Oh! I did level up Sawyer, just kidding. Everybody got leveled up. Tight. Thank you. Thank you. Tight. Eyes happen on the weird slip of paper from the other day. You wonder if maybe it's somehow a phone number? You pull out your phone and enter a... You enter each, in each number that's right side up. Finally, I've been waiting. Who is this? You don't know? That's amusing. Unless you're playing games with me. Is this a trick question? There were multiple meanings in the numbers, but good enough. It's Rowan. Come to my house when you have a moment. I have a use for you. And they hang up. What the fuck? Rowan. Hey, can I ask you something? Hell yeah, baby. Want to join when I paint my new mural? You can be my muse. Will Jake be there? Nope, just you and me. What do you say? Absolutely. Really? Wow, nice. <laughs> Midnight, the museum. Sounds illegal. Let's do it. Wear dark clothes. Seriously, though, black. I wonder what happens if I don't. If I wear my fucking Kigurumi. Whoa! It's been cool going to the dunge, but it's not exactly cozy. I saw a poster for this cool show. I'd invite you over to watch TV, but my agent has this place bugged for sure. Do you want to come over? Cool, I'll be there soon. Oh, shit! We're just getting launched in. You have a few minutes before Seven will be here. You're struck by sudden anxiety. Your apartment feels suffocatingly dirty and boring. Tidy up. You do a bit of tidying and dusting, even though it's already pretty clean. You imagine his face of disgust or disappointment, and your heart hammers in your chest. No, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, no. I'm having a panic attack. You feel a hand on your shoulder, and you hear, hey, hey, it's okay. Breathe. Slowly, you take a shaky breath and open hey. your eyes. I'm here. I have a glass of water for you. How did you get in my house? <laughs> Sorry, I barged in. The door was unlocked, and I felt like something was wrong. I had to check. <laughs> I'm glad I did. It seemed like you needed someone. Oh, Seven. You always seem so together. I don't know how that's possible. I know how it is. Not anxiety, exactly, but I'm uh, chronically depressed. At first, I thought it was the stress of Blade Generation. I'm sure Blade Generation doesn't make it easier, but depression is part of who I am. I'm mostly on top of it. Therapy, meds, routines. They help me manage, um... but... 
If I seem cold sometimes, that's why. Old coping habits mostly. Thanks for telling me. It's harder now that Sungwoo is getting even closer to my territory, mm. but I was really glad you invited me over today. I've been stewing. Oh. Thanks for the glasses, bud. Have these. A fashion designer sent me these for a sponsorship, but they'd look better on you. Ooh, fancy. No, I'll say thanks. No problem. As for tonight, there's a new season of a series I'd like to binge, Chronosite. It won a bunch of awards. It's a detective mystery show set in the future. I brought cheesies as a snack, Seven. You're great. <laughs> Oops, I don't know what I said, but they liked it. Then maybe I should keep my past mysterious. Too late for that, I guess. I'll have to invent new secrets. He falls onto your couch and you put on Chronosite. It seems to mostly take place in alleys with smoking vents at night. They keep hinting that the detective can transform into a weapon, but not what kind. <laughs> Grumpy detective, whichever way I step, fate is waiting to trip me up. Maybe you should trip her first. Seven munches on a cheesy, he glances at you. Uh, I don't want us, I don't want us to date though. I like these best friend vibes, cause I'm going for Valeria. What does lean back mean? Like, like lean back? I don't know, I don't know which that means. Lean back. There's more than six bullet holes. Somehow she had time to reload. That's impossible, unless. Yeah. Seven leans into you slightly, his knee brushing yours. The detective's assistant is short-lived and dies under mysterious circumstances. Wait, play that recording again. The voice in the call is smoky and jazzy. <laughs> You'll never take me alive, cyber cop. I'm the garot. No, I'm a garot, and there's only room for one in this town. Seven's lip quirks upwards, enjoying the show. Nice. Chain lightning does more damage when it doesn't fork. Chain lightning prefers to target enemies with lowest health. Ooh, that's interesting. Sure. Kiss his fingers. Stay platonic. You enjoy the rest of the show together until the credits roll. Do you want to offer a gift? Um, maybe. Uh, hmm. I'm torn between this. He obviously likes jewelry. I'm torn between this and this. This feel, mm. I'll give him this. Oh shit. For the snaz, sweet retro vibes. I love it. I really like you, but I should go home. This was fun. <laughs> Me too, I'll text you and look forward to next time. I don't know how to say this, but I'm into you. Seven is the only one who has had like a, like a define the relationship conversation with me. Valeria was just like, I'm mad, let's bone. <laughs> Seven's the only one that's like been straight up like, hey, just FYI. I have big decisions coming up and even just your friendship would mean a lot. Um, Yeah, I'm here for you. I know you are. Thanks, Boba Butt. I'll text Later. you night, night, bud. He lets himself out, aw. The communication king, dude. I gotta do. I gotta do a run where I go for seven now. You work in the gig economy, Sawyer. What's going on? What's happening? Oh, you'll tell me if I get too clingy, right? I promise. Cool. Dot dot dot. Okay. I don't want to take your friendship for granted. Oh, seven. Talk to you later. What a sweetie poop. What pocket is missing? I found a pair of brass knuckles in my kitchen. Is this a threat? Did you take my cat hostage? The knuckles are your cat. I don't know what that means. Wait, wait something's happening. Pocket's back. Sorry for the accusation. <laughs> now he wants to go out. I guess he was sleeping here, sleeping somewhere. I'll watch him. So there, he's out. Looks like he's headed for the museum. Have fun. If my cat came back super fucked up from a cat fight, I would not let them back out right away. But okay, pocket. Or okay, tank. Tank? Okay, tank. I keep seeing something called blade generation everywhere. All I know is it's really popular. Be my youth culture interpreter. What is it? Unless it's some kind of sex thing, then don't. 
Don't tell me it's a band. Oh, okay. Well, if you find a CD of theirs, bring it home so I can listen. I don't want to fall completely out of touch, you know. Thanks, honey. It's been a while since we've sparred. My office has been quiet lately. How about a fencing lesson? On guard. The dungo, right? That means you work in the gig economy? I guess so. <laughs> Cool, okay. I have an assignment for my economics class. If you have a minute, I'd like to interview you. Come to Paradise Lost when you can. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, hold on. Make our hair black. Our outfit, black. Our hat, black. I understood the assignment. That's cute. That's cuter. Beverages heal more. Oh my gosh. Wait, these all have... No, not all of them. Exit shows in minimap. You can see further. Doubles all damage? Carry more zines and fewer beverages. Oh, that's why when... Oh, shit. Hides the map. Beverages heal more. Enemies get stunned when they damage you. Doubles all damage. Oh, my God. Carry more beverages. Revives you once. Whoa. Wait, do clothes have anything? No, I think it's just the hats. Interesting. Well... Interessant. <gasps> Cute. Scene. Yeah, what's that like? I never use those. Okay. Hold on, I'm going here first. You find Rowan waiting outside the mansion. They give you a brief <sighs> nod. I suppose you want me to invite you in for tea, because people do that. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with you, Rowan. No thanks. Good! <laughs> I was gonna go look for an herb on the mountain. Crowley thought you might want to help. The bird looks at you pointedly from Rowan's shoulders. Nice to meet you, Crowley. Crowley bobs his head, clicking Pretty his beak. Human. Aw. If he vouches for you, that's good enough for me, so let's get going. Uh, yeah, I'd enjoy a yes. hike. It's settled then. They start walking off toward the hills. You walk together along a narrow trail in silent companionship. Here, I always want to pronounce that Alice now. I've ruined myself. Alice once found Laurel Sumac and Black Sage here no. somewhere. Since the hike is over, uh, listen, don't get any wild ideas. I need you to do something, please. Just rest here on this rock. I'll be back. I'll help. No. Thanks, but no, I'll handle this. Stay put. They wade into the underbrush without looking back. You wait for a while. The breeze is soft. The sun is warm. But a girl can only take so much breeze and sun. You feel antsy. I'll gather some wildflowers. Oh, sick. I got a flower crown, bitch. You gather flowers from nearby and weave them together into a chain. As you finish, Rowan returns. Offer them the chain. No. 
<laughs> no. Some days I feel more feminine, but not today. You have some skill with your fingers. That much is clear. Thank you. I found the Laurel Sumac, but not the Black Sage. Would you like to offer a gift? Uh, I mean, I just tried. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything for them. A mystery novel? Since you seem to like riddles so much. Hmm. Sure. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm confident I will solve the murder before the protagonist if the facts are described in enough detail. Oh well, it's too late anyway. What do you no. wonder? Doesn't matter, I have to face this. It's just me now. Boba Butt, I have something important to ask you. Oh. To take you into a dungo? Because I will. Heavy finishers create a temporary gravity well. Pulling enemies toward the center? Okay. If you were to wield me, what would be your end goal? Strength, because... We're not trying, like, we're trying to increase our inner strength and confidence. Strength, <laughs> power, the oldest temptation, perhaps, whether arcane or profane. Though with your appetites, I wonder who you would overpower. They lead you down the mountain, silent in thought. Rowan, you're so weird. At the edge of town, they pull a black rectangle from their pocket. Our dark prisms are connected. They poke their prism and your phone vibrates. Their eyes catch on your flower chain and their lips quirk briefly into a quiet smile. I don't know if our purposes align quite, but call on me if souls need Fair harvesting. Enough. If souls need harvesting, Goodbye. Rowan, what are you? They go on their separate way and you head home. Our journey has begun. We are the fool, like in tarot. Why did you capitalize it? Next to the magician. Indeed. <laughs> okay. Though I've lost my high priestess. I'm really very sorry for how I acted when we met. I was really emotional. I took it out on you and that was wrong. Please, can you forgive me? We'll see. Fair. <laughs> Godspeed. All right. They're my exact type. Dumb and mysterious. <laughs> That's a specific type. Um... Okay, so we still don't have another dungeon unlocked, do we? I keep wondering if we need to, like... <sighs> hmm. What is this? What is this one? I wish that it said, when it's like a a no face the museum looks deserted when you reach it in the dark it looks somehow forbidding it's quiet too quiet and you shiver involuntarily maybe that's why you nearly jump out of your skin when a hand descends on your arm another hand covers your mouth as you're pulled down an alley shh it's just me you startled me. The Roses of Venus have been doing graffiti for years. I've been doing this for years. You're in good hands. I promise it's gonna be um, fun. Um... I, uh... Valeria smiles crookedly, her eyes glinting in the half-light. You look, you're just so, um... <laughs> Thank you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look wild, free, full of abandon. <laughs> in my vampire outfit with a black beret. Thank you. Can't you feel it? Like there's something vast moving through you? Like you want to turn yourself inside out to show the world all the wonder inside of you? She pulls you into her arms without another word and you can hear her breathe God, in. I love the way you smell. Thank you. You're really high on all of this illegal activity, aren't you? Her lips touch your collarbones, the hollow at your throat. <laughs> and the way you taste. Oh my goodness. By the time she reaches your lips, you've forgotten your own name and why you're here. Valeria's foot jostles the black duffel bag at her feet and it jangles. She springs back with a hiss and glances around. Don't think anyone heard that lucky. Yeah, Valeria. Aren't you supposed to be the pro here? She casts you a rueful look. We should focus on Roses of Venus business. Just you and me. Valeria hefts the bag over her shoulder and points toward the wall of the museum. This is a good wall. See how nice and smooth it is? I've already primed it with satin paint. Takes up color better that way. 
She zips open the bag, revealing an array of spray paint cans, paintbrushes, and paint. Pick a color for me. I need inspiration. Ooh. Green. Huh? Green can be for envy, but that's so limiting. Green is grass and forests and growth. Valeria hefts the paint that you chose, juggling it from one hand to another. Can attack in the middle of a roll? God damn. Her face is thoughtful, almost preoccupied. She turns to look at you in her eyes. For a moment, you feel almost alone, as though Valeria isn't with you. As if the world around you is tissue thin, beneath it something blazes with color, and just as quickly, the moment huh? is gone. Did you feel that? Her voice sounds shaky. You're not sure what your voice will sound like when you say, yes. I wish I could say that's never happened to me before, but right now we have a job to do. She marks the surface of the wall, dividing it up into halves and then quarters. After a moment's hesitation, Valeria hands you the paint can. <laughs> You're my muse, paint something. Like what? Just let the wall speak to you. That's what I do. You take a deep breath and lift the paint can in your hand. When the sound of sirens stares through the night. Oh shit. <laughs> She grabs her bag and your free hand and begins to run. A voice hisses softly from a nearby shadow. <gasps> Jake called the cops. What a bitch. I'm, ca I'm calling it. I'm calling it right now. Valentine, over here, huh? this way. Jake, what are you doing here? Saving your asses. What the hell do you think I'm doing here? I mean, if I say this, he's gonna be like, not you bitch. And if I say this, then Valeria is going to be like, he wouldn't do that. <sighs> I'm mostly here to save her, but I doubt she'd leave you behind. This is a rose is a Venus job, and I'm still a rose. I'm here to help. <laughs> Come on, Valentine. I'm on your side. I took your side against my own sister. And Boba Butt, whatever's between you and me, I'd never betray Val. All right. Huh? I believe him. A siren sounds far too close for comfort. Do you want us all to get arrested? We gotta go. Fine. Let's go. You all start running, following Jake, three silhouettes flying down the alleys. Soon you leave the sirens behind, the only sound your own breathing and the crunch of gravel. You can't stop your hands from shaking for some time even after you arrive at home. God damn, what a high octane date. Yes? Good thing Jake was there. That was close. Oh, is that it? Okay. You find Sawyer and Olivia sharing a textbook and comparing notes. Oh, good, you made it. Olivia, meet hey. Boba Butt. Oh, we already know each other a little bit. We hung out here, in fact. Funny. Well, Boba Butt fills the bill of a gig economy worker who has a college education. She fits the assignment. Let's start the interview. Meow. Aw, Kitty, we should interview you instead. You're a gig economy worker, too. Does he have a degree? I'm not sure a cat cafe sounds like a gig. He gets room and board, you know. And then the cat hisses and wanders huh? away. Sawyer, how can you be so rude to that poor exploited kitty? Hey, if you want to start a cat union, I'm on board, but we have homework to do. Okay, so Boba Butt, how much do you think a college education helps someone work better in the dunge? Not at all. Olivia furrows her brow. Um, okay, we know it's a dangerous job, but do you get any benefits from working in the dunge? Uh, I meet new people. That would be true of any job. That's not really the kind of benefit we mean. Mm. Traditionally, workers get health or life insurance, unemployment pay, minimum wage, or even a company car if the job requires it. This isn't that kind uh -huh. of job. Okay, but what opportunities for advancement do you have? <laughs> I try to go deeper. They call me a sword smoocher. I try to go deeper. Sawyer frowns at their notes and exchanges a look with Olivia. Hmm. <sighs> According to this evaluation assignment, you're being thoroughly exploited. <laughs> and the more jobs like yours, the more unstable and fragile our economy is. Well, jobs like mine too. It's not like they pay weapons better. What have I done? Uh... Now on top of exams and homework, I have to worry about contributing to exploitation? <laughs> oh no! Uh... <laughs> you're okay. Mm -hmm. Boba Butt's right, you know. 
So why you're chill. It's not your fault. You're doing your best and you're still a student. Once you're graduated, you can do whatever, you know? Sawyer sighs and the cat returns, jumping up next to them and staring curiously. Well, I'm gonna go. I have other homework before my shift. Bye! Olivia waves and gives the cat a neck scratch on her way out. Sawyer thoughtfully pets the cat, frowning. It purrs softly. What's wrong? I'm not sure, really. Everything, maybe, or nothing. I just have a big exam coming up and I don't feel ready for anything. But I'm, it's fine, I'm fine. I should just focus on the here and now, which means here and now I should probably be brave and say, they swallow, fingers fidgeting. I don't know if this is a date for you, but I like you, like I really like you, oh no. All finishers immobilize and knock back. Meow meow. <laughs> Good point, kitty. I meant boba butt, sorry. The cat goes back to sleep. So what do you think? Is it okay that I like you maybe a lot? I like you as a friend. Mm. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I just, um, I'll adjust my expectations, thanks. You spend the rest of the afternoon petting cats and chatting. Eventually you head home. Real world problems in my sword smooching game. More likely than you'd think. I got an A on the interview assignment. Nice work. I'm pumped. Let's dunge. Hell yeah. Let's dunge. Is there a dunge to do? Doubles all damage, which I assume means also damage to me. Beverages heal more. Carry more beverages and fewer zines. See further. Beverages heal more. Revives you once. I do like that. It's kind of weird to have them as a romance option. I mean, they're an adult. They don't specify how old you are. It's just that if I'm, if I'm imagining that my character is the same age as me, then yeah, that age difference is weird for me. But if a college student is playing this game, <laughs> there is a college age option for somebody, <laughs> you know. But I think, um, I think the character in general feels young. Maybe regardless, but that's hard for me to determine again as a 30 something. <laughs> I know, me too. I really like that the game at a certain point gives you the option to be like, I just want to be friendos. And it doesn't like cut off progression with them. That's really nice. Who is this date with? The cat? Wow. Yep. <laughs> you find Pocket sitting outside the Verona Beach Museum. He's looking at you expectantly. What up? He flicks his tail nonchalantly. His fur looks freshly clean and brushed. Would you like to offer a gift? Do I have anything? I think I still don't really have anything. You decide not to give a gift. The door opens suddenly. Pocket jumps out of the way, eyes wide with curiosity. Oh, if it isn't the elusive boba butt. What luck. I wanted to discuss our next date. Eric. Pocket is suddenly on full alert as if someone stepped on his tail. Yeah, get him, Pocket. Stand back, boba butt. I know this cat. He's a dangerous wild beast. Ugh. Eric tries to kick at Pocket. The cat sprints past into the museum. They do not allow dirty animals in places of sophistication. Do not hurt him, you piece of shit. Eric flinches back from your fury. You imagine his tail would be between his legs if he had one. You brush past him into the museum lobby. Bye! You enter just in time to see Pocket's tail disappear into the prehistoric exhibit. You follow, browsing the dinosaur bones and surreptitiously checking nooks and crannies. Eventually, you find him gazing at a saber-toothed cat skeleton the size of a panther. Study the skeleton. You take a moment to admire the skeleton's preserved ferocity from tusk to tail. The label reads, Smilodon Fatalis, excavated in Verona Beach, California State Fossil. Pocket releases a small wheezy sigh at the Smilodon. Is this your role model? Finishers have wider arcs. Ooh, I like that. 
Pocket's tail swishes with sudden mischief. He pounces on your foot playfully. His whiskers vibrate with excitement as he turns from the Smilodon to run out of the museum. Security guards approach, but he's already out the door and scampering down the street. You browse the rest of the exhibit before heading home. Ugh. Pac is acting weird. He's more educated. I wish he'd stop attacking my feet. My slippers are destroyed. Jeez. Um. Okay, let's see. It's weird to me that another dungeon hasn't popped up yet. Like, I can't tell if I need to get somebody to a certain rank, or if... Okay, I guess I'll go hang with Isaac and see what happens. Well, hello. What up? You seem to be getting the hang of parrying. Today we'll try the riposte. After a parry, a riposte lets you thrust in return. He glances at the door and back to you. It's easier if I show you. Go ahead and attack me. Uh, lunge. Isaac deflects easily. You are leaned straight into his foil, pressing into your shoulder. The more aggressive the attack, the more vicious the riposte. A riposte turns the attacker's energy back upon them. Mm -hmm. Isaac glances at the clock. Here, I'll attack you. Parry and then step forward and attack immediately. Okay. Isaac slowly attacks and you parry, then thrust, making right. a touch. And that's the riposte. He attacks. You practice it as a drill a few times. He's sweating more than usual. That's enough for today. I'd like to talk to you about something. He takes off his gear and pours refreshments. I thought at first that that water sound was supposed to be his sweat. And I was like, Jesus, Isaac. My father has finished a hostile takeover of my firm. What? He bought a majority and discredited me with the board. So my time is just about over at Brooks Associates. I only have today and tomorrow. God, your dad sucks. Try not to care what he thinks. He's a foolish, closed-minded old man. I've officially disowned him and cut off contact. But now I'm going to lose everything I've built here because of him. How can I not care? I'm sorry your dad is garbage. Right. It is deeply so. But I'm really glad that I talked to you. I'm sorry to burden you. It's not a bird in Isaac. I never use the charge anyway. I guess this is our last time fencing in this office. Tomorrow's my last day. I sold my stock. I'll be comfortable Comfortable while I sort out what to do next. It'll be a bit like starting over. I've lost mm -hmm. so much. I try to keep, I am I keep trying to focus on fencing, but it's not working. Maybe I should give mm -hmm. up for the day. Or I could make a house call for a uniquely talented fencing student like you. Uh. Oh god, why not interested? Why is that the way that I put it? That's such a shitty way to respond to this when he's like, my world's basically falling apart, but maybe I could hang out with you. And I'm like, no. <laughs> like, shit. I mean, our character doesn't. This isn't one of those situations where you like, whatever whatever I say here is exactly what I say. It's not a situation of, um, I wonder what happens if I do this. Um, I mean, I guess I could do why not tonight and then it'll probably lead into like a what are we <laughs> like with everybody else? Sure. It's tempting to want to get closer to you any way I can, but your temptation might be too strong for me right now. I'm not in a great place emotionally and I dream about you. I need to know we're committed to each other before we can be intimate. Oh shit. Otherwise I'd just regret it afterwards and I don't want to regret anything. Oh, so that was, that I led him on by accident just then. <laughs> 
Understood. Don't worry, I promise I'm not trying to rush you. I'm just being clear about my requirements. Take your time and think about it. Got it, Isaac. Thank you. Oh! He gave me a kiss. Whoops. I suppose this is a good night for now. Thanks for the companionship. No problem. I'm going home. Oops. I've been dreaming about you. No. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Well, that was an accidente <laughs> just then. Zombie dreams. Be as unsexy as possible. Do you get those? I hope not. You were healing broken weapons of all kinds. Me too. It was lovely. You're a comfort to me even when I'm asleep. Oh, goodness. I need a dungeon. I need a dungeon to go into, please. No new dungeons. Do they think that... La Rosa is going to take you longer than it does? I'm so confused. Hmm. I'm going to take a little break. And when we come back... I fully expected Why Not Tonight to be a friendly hang. I know. I thought Why Not Tonight would be like a, hey, let's hang out tonight. You know? Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> BRB.
Oh my god, guys. There was some spicy garlic bread from last night just sitting in the fridge, and I didn't eat any of it last night, so it's mine. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Okay, so I've done <laughs> everything. Like, sure. I'll buy them all. Why not? <laughs> There's some kind of an achievo for having all the clothes. I want it. So. Yeah, I don't know what's on it, but it looks like a it looks like a spicy red pesto sort of thing. Bye. Please don't. I'm trying to figure out if there's like something I'm not realizing that I need to do. But I don't think that there is. <laughs> I can't start talking to him now. Oh, Rowan. Yeah. Maybe this is why, because I have to take Rowan into a dunk. Forward. Let us be the chariot together. Hmm. Oop, nope, not that. Gosh, the dungeons are so small at the very beginning of the game. Oh no! They're maxed already.
I can't get over the fact that we're holding a scythe with one hand. Mm. You know, the perfectly natural way to hold a scythe. Remember when the damage was like four, how the turntables turn? <laughs> Pocket jumps up on the fountain's edge gracefully. I still don't have a gift for you. His note accidentally touches the surface and he startles backwards falling off. I don't think Pocket's ever been in this dungeon. Pocket hisses at the fountain and walks away, tail primly in the air. I know, aren't the little paw prints cute? I do mean cat hands, thank you. the lovely people that works at Akira Coffee. We have like um, monthly meetings. And she was like, all right, I've written down cat hands in my notes. <laughs> She's like, for us to discuss at our next meeting. I was like, great. <laughs> saw this area. You put a token in a machine and start playing. Pocket paces back and forth. You realize there's a paw on your hand over the button. You look over. Pocket is standing on the arcade cabinet wow. intently. He taps your hand with a paw again, pushing the button. You want to play? Pocket wails on the buttons with both paws as if they were bongos. He doesn't get a high score, but afterwards he seems much calmer than before. Pocket rubs against your leg and transforms back into a weapon. Daw. How sweet. Woohoo! Hell yeah. Pocket jumps up on one of the chairs, sniffing. Pocket accidentally pushes a button. The massage chair starts vibrating. Show him it's safe. 
You settle into a chair and turn it on, enjoying the massage. Pocket stops hissing, but still stares at the chair, wary of betrayal. He gives the chair a single claw swipe and stalks away. Great. Why do you play with anyone that isn't Pocket? Look, Pocket's great. Weapon-wise, absolutely one of the best. If not the best weapon. God, the reach on that is really good. God, this is taking a while. It's okay, we've committed with pocket. We've committed, it's fine. Yeah, let's do this big fight. Never mind. <laughs> I thought that would be harder than it was. Okay. I was like, oh, I should definitely do that boss fight. We're trying to like level this cat up, you know? He goes straight for the vanilla, pushing aside the chocolate. He closes his eyes and licks the ice cream contentedly. Is it good? He doesn't seem to hear you. He's too deep in the vanilla zone. Pocket stops licking and starts washing his paws and face. Pocket stares at you disdainfully. I don't know who to give it to, and I figure at the very least it would be fun for Pocket to play with, you know? the cat would like the opera tickets. I feel like the cat would like one of the tickets, but I'm not sure which one. Okay, come on. Man, maybe we got all of the blueprints in this area. That would really surprise me though. We haven't gotten any blueprints since we came in here, I don't think. Clark really wanted me to take a picture of her eating her breakfast this morning and send it to my mom, so I did. <laughs> it's just a picture of her like sitting on the kitchen table eating Weetabix. <laughs> and I sent it and I was like, Clark insisted. And in true grandmother fashion, my mom was like, oh, it looks delicious. What a yummy breakfast. <laughs> I was like, oh, mommy. Uh, 
um, my mom uh, because she knows that Clark loves to play dress up. So my mom made her uh, a dressing up box at their house so that when we come to visit, you know, in m like months from now, so that when we come to visit, Clark has a dressing up box to play with, which is very cute. Yeah, Clark loves Weetabix. Which is so funny to me, because it's literally, it's just, it's just Bran. I know, isn't that cute? My mom. Yeah, we're not getting any blueprints anymore. So maybe we got them all. Arcades are romantic hmm. in a way. The machines become outdated almost as soon as they're made, you know? They're ephemeral, always replaced by something newer and better. Valeria leads you to a love tester. Let's try this one. It's one of the older ones. I think it uses skin conductivity. The love tester device has two metal rods. Valeria stands in yeah. front of one. Are you brave enough? This will tell us what our future looks like. Oh, this is this is kind of a hot thing to say. I know our future, babe. I don't need the love tester. <laughs> yeah, let's go. The machine lights up and beeps as if calibrating. I'm thinking about you and how cute you are. The machine sparks and starts um. smoking. Well, there's a few ways to interpret that. I'll take it as a good sign. Or too hot for this old rickety thing to handle. And I got a smooch. Guess we have to get back to work. Can't scandalize the monsters. I don't know that she... Uh, actually, I think she would. That's thoughtful, thanks. Sure. Because they're like the, the roses or whatever, right? That's such a great question. I don't know what the spooky zine does. I think it, if I was gonna guess, it makes things run away from you. But let's try it because I still have not tried it. Yeah, it makes them feared. doing roll hits more. Huh. Yeah. Feels nice to stretch out after a long session of stabbing monsters. When I'm in a dagger I'm more focused, but more tense, too. Mm-hmm. Of course, why do you think I'm here? The pay isn't great. She nudges you playfully and sits on the fountain's edge. You sit together in a companionable silence. That was nice. My life could use a little more peace. Now I'm ready to head back in. Nice. No problem, babe. Tight. We're 
not finding anything anymore. So I'm gonna assume that there probably isn't. Yeah, so that's the exit. Floors? Are there? Good question, me. Oops. What? Oh. Oh, I did go everywhere. Okay. I don't know. Throughout was throughout this game, Seven's really wriggled his way into my heart. So I definitely want to do a run where we find out more about Seven, I think. But I still I don't even really know like how far we're in this game. Cause like in some ways it feels like there isn't a ton left of it, and in other ways, it feels like we're only halfway through. It's kind of hard to tell. Like, Valeria is almost completely leveled up, right? But on our shelf in our room, we only have two, like, um, out of what it looks like is probably four, we only have two uh, little symbols for like defeating dungeons. So, huh. reminiscent of Steinland, but even more poppy and mainstream, probably a lazy knockoff. Possible the artist is knowingly commenting on the commercial placement. It'd be nice if the piece were both pretty and honest. They're both important components, wouldn't you say? In art, of course. Um. I don't remember what I said last time. <laughs> oh, I said that last time. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot about that. I did say that last time. And she called me a coward then. I keep wondering if like you can play this game without having met or interacted with Rowan really. Cause you don't find them in the dungeon like you do everybody else. What's this question mark thing? Oh. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Oh right, the final boss was like a big butterfly thing. I'm remembering that now. We have time for some self-indulgence. You sit in the massage chairs, they vibrate Ugh. and knead your back. 
too soon it's over, but you feel more relaxed. Do you want to offer a gift? Uh, sure. Oh, hey! I have to use this on my next trip. I hope you'll come with me. Oh, Valeria stretches with a happy groan. Do you think the monsters use massage chairs to relax when they're not fighting? Definitely. <laughs> mm hmm All those weird vertebrae need special massage expertise, I'm sure, until we chop them up. Damn, dark. I don't understand this game right now. Uh, what is there to not understand? What kind of a weapon would Sam be? Is that what you guys are talking about? Some kind of like a war hammer, I think. That. I hate when you ask that. Of course I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's definitely a strength-based weapon. He's uh, this is not Sam is not a finesse weapon. <laughs> North American arcades are kind of <laughs> funny. They're so old and chill. Nobody's trying to be a pro. Uh, we could play yeah. co-op. Okay, I heard this Moon Hunters one is pretty good. I never found the moon though. I played that. You be the shapeshifty druid. I'll be the swordsman. You spend some time beating up pixel monsters and collecting loot. Seven runs over and resurrects you each time your character <laughs> falls. Good thing you're more careful in real life than in the game. Seven smiles, wiping sweat from his eyes. Do you want to offer a gift? Um. Oh yeah, concert tickets. I'd love to go with you. Gotta keep that love of music alive. Winning is hard work unless we work together. Yeah. All right, let's go. Oh my God. It's almost maxed out already. Man, so close. Hmm.
It's interesting that they introduce like some weapons so late. I'll just max out seven. Yeah, in this world, like, people can turn into weapons. Not not all people, but it's like a normal acknowledged thing that people and some animals can... Well, people are animals, but you know what I mean. You want to, like, hang out? But yeah, even though the game is called Boyfriend Dungeon, the people you can date, boys, girls, non-binaries, there are two non-binary characters in the game so far that I believe are romantic options. One of them we literally just met. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, we're not trying to smooch the cat, you know? <laughs> we just hang out with the cat and the cat gets us in trouble. He scuffs at the mm. ice with his foot. You can skate without me. Uh, hmm. Okay, cheer me yeah. on. I'll be here for support. <laughs> Aw, eventually you step off the ice and seven and seven claps. <laughs> mm, let's finish these rooms back here first. Cause I'll just have to backtrack anyway. also great for uh, getting supplies that I need to make stuff back at home. I'm doing material grinding in a dating sim. Who would have thunk? asked an amazing question in chat. <laughs> this world makes me want to ask so many questions. If a dude can turn into a sword, is he allowed on planes? Would he be shipped as baggage for a lower cost than a normal ticket? Okay, Isaac or Sawyer? Let's do Sawyer. We haven't had an opportunity to play with Sawyer a ton. weapon is slower than a lot of the other weapons that I've been fighting with. Oop. Why are you leaving Sunder on Reed? Well, at the start of the game, literally everybody was like, uh, be wary of Sunder. 
and Sunder was like coming on way too strong. So I was like, I'm just gonna leave him on Reed. And now it's kind of a bit. <laughs> like I can't talk to him now, I've committed. Uh oh. Oh shit. Okay, well, do our best. Yeah, that is true. I did make an accidental advance on on Isaac and did not mean to. Sawyer, you better fucking level up, I swear to God. I like fountains. They're playful and always changing. Does that does it count as always changing if it's just water flowing? It looks mostly the same. What counts as change? Why do you ask? Sawyer frowns and thinks for a moment. My grandma had three careers. She went everywhere. She was a flight attendant, then a fashion designer, finally a union leader. She died when I was little, but she's still one of my heroes. I want to be like her. I don't want to just be a student or a glaive. I'm glad I can be both with you and keep learning new things, so let's keep leveling up together. Uh, sure. Food goes well with this kid. Yes! Yes to all of them and any others you might have! Sawyer smiles with new determination in their eyes. All right, sick. I think because we've beaten the boss, there's just like no background music now, which is pretty funny. Okay. Dang it. Oh, wait, but with the bonus. Yeah! Thank you. Understandable. Man. Sorry, that was Crowley. Oh, we just met. <laughs> They're both yes. <laughs> I'm so much leftover. Vegan cheese everywhere. And I'm sick of grilled sandwiches. I thought my plan was foolproof, but here I am. A proofed fool. Let's cook something else. Sawyer arrives a few minutes later. What are we cooking today, chef? I brought all my leftover cheese. Mac wow. and cheese? Brilliant! I know I could count on you. I tried Googling cheese recipes, but they had all these complex instructions. Um, I've been looked at a few for mac and cheese, but they required a roux. One of them had like 50 photos of a vacation to Austria for some reason. It's too intense. 
I probably could have figured it out myself eventually, but I haven't really been sleeping. Yep. Too much stress? You could say that. Stressful having raccoons living in your dorm vents. And I guess summer finals are coming up soon. And I'm starting to wonder about everything. It's not a warm, fuzzy feeling. Even if I get straight A's, am I wasting the peak years of my life going into debt? And for what? I'm studying history, burying my nose in the past while the future burns. What do you want to do? No idea. I've been excited about so many things, and then none of them worked out. I love playing video games, but that doesn't mean I want to make them. If I quit school, maybe I could do something to really change the world. Volunteer for the next mayor's election campaign. If I wait until after I graduate, I'm being selfish while people suffer. But you're the coolest person I know, and you graduated college, so what do you think? Would you make the same decisions if you could go back in time? I mean, this top answer is the real answer. Would you make the same decisions if you could go back in time? None of these answer that question. <laughs> Follow your heart. <laughs> if I could. I don't even know what my heart wants. I know I'm drawn to you. With your support, I feel like I can do anything. All right. I feel like I fucked that up, but that's okay. Even fight a boss battle, like making mac and cheese. I know I helped last time, but maybe this time I should just watch. I mean, if I touch it, I'll ruin it. Nonsense. Be brave. Yes, ma'am. Saw your beams with excitement. Fists clenched. Are they powered up? Let's do this. Yeah! Nope, yep, Sawyer, follow the steps for a baked mac and cheese with breadcrumbs. Soon enough, you're eating the fruits or starches of your labor. I love mac and cheese. So gooey, so comforting. It's actually better than restaurant food. How? You're like the best big sister ever. Yes! We managed to turn it into a sibling thing. Exactly as we wanted. Whoa. Plus, I just realized we have leftovers for breakfast. This is the best. But it's getting a bit late. I should get some sleep before my exams tomorrow. Raccoons or not? Aw, what a sweetie pie. <laughs> Here's some vodka. <laughs> uh, I don't really have anything for you, Sawyer, I don't think. I don't mean to be a burden or in the way. I feel weird asking, but I can't help thinking it would be so rad. Can I sleep on your couch tonight, please? It's, it's okay to say no and change your mind. Really, this isn't a B and b Sure. Yay, you're the best. I'll snuggle down and not be a bother. Night. You put a throw blanket over them and they're snoring within minutes and you go to bed. In the morning, they're rushing, late for class. Got a jet, Hi. thanks again, chef. Sawyer's eyes shine with admiration. The door closes softly behind them. Help urgent, you just left. Who? Emperor something, I think, of China? No time, please, Cow Cow's other title. Are you cheating right now? <laughs> Am I helping you cheat, Sawyer? I have no idea. Thanks, it's probably wrong. Oh, you a drink for the other night and I miss hanging out just like as humans. Daggering's fun, but not as fun as your lips coming to my studio, yup. <laughs> I'm there now. Okay. I have a big decision to make. I can't figure out what to do. I'm here at Paradise Lost, hoping the cats will keep me calm. I'll be there. I'm letting Pocket out. Worried is looking for a fight. I'll keep him safe. I hope so. Tank, do I ever get to meet you? Pocket's out. Good luck finding him. Okay. I got an Achievo just then.
Make everything. Build everything. Top hat and monocle. Incredible. Oh my god. Scares enemies, creates an allied turret. Interesting. Summons a bug ally, creates a decoy. Bug ally, bug ally. change clothes um. hold on let's get cute Cute. What does the sun hat do? Enemies get stunned when they damage you. That's what I'm talking about. Pretty ribbon to feel pretty. Oh. Cute. Adorable. All right, Rowan, what's up? The mansion's front door does not have a doorbell, only a raven-headed door knocker. This is a big house. The door is cold against your fingers as you wrap it against the door. The door swings open. It seems dark inside. Hello? <laughs> a hoarse chuckle rasps from within the mansion. That's the crow, isn't nothing it? Nothing more. Only this and nothing more. You hesitantly step inside, but it's so dark it takes your eyes a moment to adjust. A hoarse chuckle rasps Nothing from more. a shadow. Hush. No jokes right now, please. Don't mind him. Thanks for coming. The tea is Nothing nearly more. ready. You find her in a sitting room that smells of dusty feathers and moldy Good fabric. Day. Welcome. The appraiser will be here soon. Please don't try your usual seduction tactics. What? He seems both lonely and bitter, which is dangerous. Use a light touch and follow my lead. I'm... You just said you didn't want to be alone. I don't plan on saying shit, Rowan. <laughs> like what? No. He isn't Nothing subtle. More. He thinks he's the Hierophant or maybe Justice, but he's just a Knight of Swords. A knock on the door interrupts you both. I knew it was gonna be this piece of shit. God fucking damn it. I never should have come here. Hello, lovelies. I wasn't expecting Boba, but as well, you're a scythe for sore eyes. Hmm. Are you here to bid on the estate items as well? I'll let Rowan answer. You sip your tea. Delicious, layered. Rowan meets your eye with a small, grateful smile. Boba Butt is my associate serving as a witness, that's all. Would you like some tea? I harvested the leaves just this morning. No. What a, what a cottage core. What a cottage core, like that's a title. I'd rather not waste time, no matter how exciting. My store has to be closed while I'm here, after all. Let's just see the blades and be done with it. Rowan brings out a long silk-wrapped package that they unwrap to reveal a sword and sickle. They're family heirlooms from the British side of the family. The sword is in the style of ancient Britain, around 2,000 years ago. It's fine workmanship for a replica. I'd give you 300 for it. Rowan clears their throat and speaks almost too quietly no. to be heard. It's not a replica. <clears throat> This isn't a 2,000 year old sword, my dear Envy. Be reasonable. <laughs> I hate this guy, but my dear Envy is 
adorable. It's the blade that Boudicca wielded when she defeated the Romans and chased them from Wales. Eric blinks, then blinks again. He clears his throat awkwardly, gathering his thoughts. First of all, Boudicca didn't defeat the Romans. They defeated her, sadly. Oh. Imperialist propaganda. Second of all, if you think this blade is more than 50 years old, you're dumber than you look. <sighs> I was told to use a light touch, but... Um, hmm. I wasn't told to just not talk. I was told to not be aggro. Eric stinky. Eric is stinky. What a stinky poopy man. It's my profession to know whether Rowan is trying to deceive me or has been deceived is immaterial. Do you have a certificate or some other documentation I can inspect? Rowan doesn't respond. Eric snorts and turns his attention to the sickle. Here, there's a bit of a family resemblance. What is this, a cousin? You tell me. Hmm. It's potentially a bit older than the other, maybe a hundred years or so. What is this crest? You're the expert. Now, now, don't sulk. It ruins your pretty forehead. God, Eric sucks. The crest adds a bit of exotic flavor. Not many collectors of sickles, though, so it'd also be $300. I see. Hmm. So do we have a deal? You won't get a better offer Never anywhere. More. Tell your pigeon to let the adults do the negotiating and I'll increase my offer to 350. If you think being called a pigeon is an insult, you're hopeless. Everyone knows pigeons are the most romantic of birds. You should just go. 400, but that, <laughs> that face. 400, but that's my final offer. Why not reap the benefits of my expertise? I said, leave. Eric hesitates and looks to you, a flinty defiance in his eyes. <laughs> Sip your tea! All of these options. The last one is the funniest. <laughs> to just... Right? That's a tomato emote on a different face. Hmm, do I want to just sip my tea or say get out? Sipping the tea is pretty funny. Your tea seems to taste even better as you watch Rowan transform. You're not the sharpest tool in the shed, are you, Eric? Eric makes a hasty exit. Should have known better than to trust a profane merchant. Besides which, his aura seems to be sickening as if it were rotting. Rowan, you see the truth. I wouldn't have sold them to him even for millions. I was mostly curious. Uh, What will you do? I wish Alice were here to tell me what to do next, but then I wouldn't have this problem. Crowley preens Rowan's hair gently, making a soft clicking sound. Thank you for your support today. No prob. Gravity wells also do damage over time to any enemy affected by them. Gravity wells explode and do damage. Ooh, yeah, AOE. You said you wanted to wield me for power before. Today, you spoke up on my behalf, but also let me steer the conversation. I appreciate it. I don't know how I've earned your loyalty, but I'm glad I have it. Yeah, especially since the first time we saw each other, you were like, <laughs> wanted to kill me. Would you like to offer a gift? Do I have anything? Uh, eh, a thoughtful gift. I sense kinship Goodbye. between us. All right. Curly, that's a bit abrupt, but yes, I will look forward to the dunge if you want to wield me. Perhaps we can go scythe seeing. I'd Very like well. that. Excellent, good day. You and Eric have an unhealthy resonance. I would avoid him if I were you. I try. I'm trying. And yet his orbit grows tighter. Take care. Jake is at the studio talking to Valeria when hey. you arrive. Hey, Boba Butt. Valeria gives your hand a squeeze and doesn't look away from your eyes when she says, say hi, Jake. Huh. Hi, Jake. 
Valeria glares at him till he drops his gaze. Thought we were going to try and be friends with each other. I saved both of you at the museum job, didn't I? Should count for something, especially since I wasn't invited. Ugh. That was my decision, Jake. You must have expected it with the way you've been acting. I'm a Rose of Venus, Valentine. You should have told me about it. There's a moment between them. You almost feel like you're intruding. Ugh. You're right, I should have said something. I just wanted to show Boba Butt what we do, though it turned into a disaster. Fewer cops <laughs> next time. Fewer cops next time is actually our motto. It isn't, but it should be. Jake shoves his hands into his pockets and clears his throat to catch your attention. I have something to tell you, huh? both of you. I spoke to Jess, my sister, and she wants you back, Val. I mean, Jake eyes you curiously, as ex expecting you to interject before continuing. Not as what we were before, as partners. She wants us to be the Roses of Venus again. You, me, Jess, and her too. Me? You realize he's gesturing at you. I don't, I've literally, I haven't painted a single thing in this game. <laughs> You look at Valeria, and she looks as shocked as you feel. Remember, it's okay to goof, but remember not to spoil anything about the game in chat that we haven't seen yet, okay? Uh, what, you're important to Val, and you can keep a secret. Jake grins, his sharp as a knife grin, and cocks an eyebrow. So what do you say? You wanna join the Roses of Venus? No. <laughs> a look of acceptance passes over Jake's face. He tries to dredge up a smile, but fails. I didn't think you would, but I had to try. That means I've lost you too, huh, Valentine? Um... You and Jess haven't lost me, Jake. I'm still a Rose of Venus. I just have a life here in Verona Beach, so tell her mm -hmm. that. Tell her I'm happy and tell her I'm in love. Jake looks between the two of you and shakes yeah. his head. I'll tell her. Take care of yourself, Valentine. He turns and gives you a gruff nod. And you too. The bell above the door rings as Jake departs, leaving just you and Valeria in her studio. Should I have said yes? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. Valeria looks toward the door where Jake was standing moments um... before. I have something I wanted to say, but first take this. She gives you a small but heavy wooden box. You open it to find a quartz whetstone. <laughs> it's a symbol of how you make me sharper, better, stronger. With a whetstone, you're a master wielder. You gain double love with all weapons, unlimited by love rank. Oh my goodness. Double love with all weapons now. Ooh! She smiles ever so Jake slightly. And Jessica, the roses of Venus. All of that messed me up for a long time. Moving here, painting, making new friends. Aww. Falling in love again. It helped me heal. Nice! Hell yeah. I'm glad we said no. Her hands find yours, fingers intertwined as she leans into you. You share a kiss easily without thinking or hesitation, as if you'd already done so a thousand oh. times. She releases a sigh into your lips and you feel her I smile. I feel ready for something new. Love rank six, max love. Do damage in an area automatically after a roll. Rolling hurts nearby enemies. Ooh, I like that one. Valeria ducks behind the counter before you can answer and puts out brushes you and paints. Mind if I sit and paint you just for a little while? Sure. Thanks. You sit for her, watching as the line between Valeria's eyebrows crinkle in concentration. <laughs> a warm silence is interspersed with laughter as she brings you to life yeah. on her canvas. Eventually you head home. You have maximum love level with Valeria. Yeah. We've been through some shit. Oh my goodness, Max Love. I'm pretty confident no ducks will ever come between us. I mean, other humans, they also won't. It's a nice feeling, trusting again. I won't let you down. Even if you did, I wouldn't let you get away that easy. You might be leaving Verona Beach soon, but I'm a traveler too, I'll find you. So don't go without saying goodbye, okay? Let me know if you wanna pop back in the dungo sometime. I, I think, I think I, but like, like, there's a whole shelf that isn't filled. Why are you acting like it's the end of the game? Is it the end of the game? The pacing right now is weird for me.
pet cats for a little while with seven. He seems on edge. I get upset thinking about how sidekicks die in Chronosite and in that movie, you know? Yeah, it was sad. Uh -uh. It was predictable. Sidekicks are always sacrificing themselves. It's dumb. He would have been a way better hero. Mm. But if he took over for the protagonist, that would make him a villain, right? Or a spinoff. Maybe it's possible. Sung Woo says the name change wasn't his idea. Our agent talked him into it. He even invited me to make a duo with him, Lucky Seven. I don't know if he means it. I've been thinking about going solo without Sung Woo. It'd be uh. tough. But if I'm ever going to take the risk and go solo, now is probably my best chance. But if that fails, I could lose everything I've worked so hard for. Sung Woo is the more popular one, so a duo would be more guaranteed to succeed. Seven releases a long, unsteady uh. breath. My thoughts keep going like this, around and around. How can I make a decision like this? Um, why did you get into showbiz? Sort of an accident. Sung Woo was discovered by a talent scout first. He dragged me into it because we used to dance together to music videos for fun. <laughs> I'm only in Blade Generation because of him. Maybe I'm being ungrateful. Is there anything else I should consider in my decision? What do you want? Mm. I guess I want to be really good at something. And I want someone to love. Is there anything else I should consider? Do you trust mm -hmm. him? I trust him. I don't trust our agent. Sung Woo can be impressionable. If it was me, what would I do? So it sounds like Sung Woo is like a childhood friend. They've worked together a bunch. But I think he really wants, I think what he really wants is to go solo. I feel like this is an important decision. Seven is listening carefully. Uh, uh, I don't like that they're double checking. <laughs> is he literally gonna do whatever I tell him to do? Oh Lord. Okay, he said to be honest. Seven relaxes back into the couch with a small smile. I like if it was me and I had the option to like go out on my own alone or do it with like a close friend. I would do it with the close friend, I think. So that I'm answering honestly. Seven relaxes back into the couch with a small smile. <laughs> It's so relieving to hear you say that. For a minute there, I was sure you were going to tell me to go solo. Oh my god. Now I don't have to act brave to impress you. I can just do the smart thing. <laughs> Holy shit. Chain Lightning has a chance to immediately fire a second time. Oh my god. Sungwoo will be so happy. It's been a while since we've hung out, just the two of us. Now we'll be on tour, just the two of us. And you, maybe? It actually makes me look forward to going on tour. <laughs> Is this Sungwoo? Surprise! Did I hear something about a tour? Does that mean you made a decision? Seven sits up straighter as someone familiar looking approaches your table. You realize you've seen his face on Blade Generation what? posters. Sungwoo? How did you know I was here? Sungwoo glances at Seven's oh. phone. 
Oh, right. Our agent's tracking device? You guys need a different agent. This agent sounds terrible. Well, now that you're here, Sungwoo, this is Boba Butt, the wielder I've been talking about. Boba Butt, Sungwoo. Sungwoo shrugs. Hey. Nice to meet you, Boba Butt. This isn't about you, right? I heard he cut up some apples for you, so I guess it's serious. <laughs> as long as you help Seven make the right decision, we're on the uh... same side. Yes, yeah, so I thought about it from every angle. There was only one way everything made mm. sense. We should be a duo. Lucky Seven is the perfect combination, if you're still up for it. Seriously, that's the best news. Oh man, we're gonna tear it up. I have one condition though. Seven raises an eyebrow. We gotta fire our agent. She'll probably sue us, but it'll be worth it. She's toxic. Hell yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sung Woo? That's what I'm saying. What? Who's gonna line up gigs and promotions? Mm -hmm. We'll find someone. Maybe Boba Butt can help. <laughs> that's not really her job, but it does seem like she'd be good at it. What do you think? Do you wanna be our agent for the summer? For the summer? Uh. I can try. Seven smiles at you and squeezes your hand. Bro, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> this is like the best moment of my life. Lucky Seven forever. <laughs> Sungwoo rushes Seven and takes him into a bear hug. Seven wipes his eyes discreetly. I always forget how strong you are. I can't breathe, hmm. man. Sorry, bro. Yesterday was arm day at the gym. Hmm. I guess we should have a band meeting, a duo meeting. Soon, for now, let's celebrate and get out of here before anyone recognizes us. <laughs> Seven smiles. You feel yourself smiling back without realizing you're doing it. You spend the evening discussing logistics, and eventually you head home. I've got a job now, bitch. I, I'm in love with somebody. <laughs> Seven. That's a weird thing to say to your agent, but I'll hate it here without you. Let's hang out again soon. See you in the dung. I'm starting to, so here's what I'm worrying about. I've left Sunder on read this entire game. <laughs> I've left Sunder on read this entire game. And I'm worried that maybe all of the weapons have to be at a certain level for the next dungeon to open. <laughs> and that's why it hasn't opened yet. I'm so worried. Because like, why why hasn't another dungeon opened? I'm racking my brain. Like, is there something that I did last time to trigger another one opening? But I don't think there was. I don't think I did anything last time. It was just like, cool, next dungeon. And pocket wandering outside the mall. You follow him until he stops in front of a pet store. He pulls something out from a hiding place under a bench and nudges it toward you. Cat ears? The cat ears look like they'd fit you perfectly. Pocket's ears are perked up proudly. Thanks, kitty. You hear faint purring in response, then his eyes wander to the pet store's front window. There's a display of pet mice and birds available for purchase. Pocket drools. Pocket releases a little wheezy sigh of longing. <gasps> you notice a familiar street cat approach. Pocket tenses up, claws at the ready. The street cat slows as she gets into range of Pocket's attack and finally sits just out of reach. Pocket's fur fluffs up with his tension, but he doesn't move. He doesn't know what to do. Think of the smile it on. Your voice makes him startle and he jumps, panic in his eyes. The street cat steps forward menacingly. No! Pocket loses his nerve and dodges between your legs, transforming into a weapon. The street cat pauses, staring up at you and Pocket. Her tail twitches. He's with me. <laughs> Meow. It sounds like a solemn pronouncement of some kind. What is the huh? cat saying? Olivia almost bumps into you on her way out of the hey. pet shop. Oh, hey, Boba Butt. What are you doing here? Hey, I know this cat. That's a start. My old roommate's cat. What are you doing here, girl? Meow. Olivia reaches down to pet her head, but a start slinks just out of range, ears flat. She was a rescue, always moody. Uh... mean a jerk with magic powers it's like she could teleport out of locked rooms 
Poor kitty. She's probably just really strong and sneaky and smart. I mean, maybe she's a magical cat witch leading a secret cat coven. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, have a good day, Boba Butt. I'll probably see you at Kicks soon. Olivia walks away and a start watches for a moment before finally standing. <laughs> what? The street cat wanders away after her pronouncement. You reach down to pet pocket. He accepts your touch. You're not sure what the street cat said, but something changed. Oh, damn. All right. Briefly become invulnerable after a finisher. Pocket's leaning into your hand and a soft purr is starting to rumble. I don't know. I don't know if it's close enough. We've been really taking our time with this cat. Oh, you scoop Pocket in your arms. His claws are 18 little knives, but soon they retract. He purrs loudly, snuggling his face into your elbow as if to escape thoughts of fighting. I don't think I have anything for you, kitty. But you're so cute. Ow. We spend the afternoon together until Pocket gets distracted by a pigeon and runs off. You head home. <laughs> Send me a picture, bro. Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> What do you mean, wrong number? Right number? No, you do not smooch cats in this game. Um, okay, you won't get timed out for answering this specific question. Is there something that I need to, that like, I'm not doing that will trigger the next dungeon opening? Just answer that question, nothing else. I don't know how to answer. No? There's nothing I need to do? Really? The game just leaves you with two dungeons and another one doesn't open? That seems weird. This doesn't seem right. The only thing I can think of that I've like specifically done is not talked to Sunder. Hmm. Back off a little. Okay, I'll try. Let's go again sometime. Okay. Hmm. I guess I'll go back in. The stink of lust here must be like catnip for demons. Ow.
Oh, oh right, because times two. Perhaps I need a rest? Sure. <sighs> Rowan breathes in deeply, enjoying the summer night air. They pause, looking at you mm. thoughtfully. Perhaps it's the moonlight, but you look especially powerful here and now. You finally noticed, damn. Their cheeks flush slightly. Would you like to offer a gift? Um, I don't know what they like. I think Rowan and the bird combine into the weapon. So Rowan is a is a witch, and I think that the crow is meant to be their familiar, and so together they like combine their power somehow. <laughs> it's a shame we can't fight under the moonlight all the time. We have to appreciate what we have while we have it, I suppose. All we have is this moment. Let's make the most of it. Just us and my bug. Honestly, like, in terms of how the weapon feels to use, the cat's the best one. <laughs> It's just not even dropping shit for me anymore, dude. What's that all about? Ooh! Haven't seen this before. An empty stage ready for performances. Pocket leaps up onto the stage and sniffs around. Offer a gift? Said not to give a gift. Curls up next to one of the stage lights, cozy against the warmth. Pockets fur against the lights, cast a spiky shadow. I pet him. After only 10 minutes, he springs up, awake and alert. Wow. All right, let's go. Oh, nearly. Wow.
remember what it said, my like. Oh, rolling hurts enemies. I remember now. For like Valeria's final upgrade. God, there must be so few left if the drop rate is that low. Same. Which weapon are we smooching? Valeria. Sawyer's face lights up at the sight of the pool tables Whoa. and cues. Finally, another long weapon to talk with. It's been forever since I've chatted with my Polaxe friend. Hey, pool cue, how's it going? Knocked anything over by accident lately? The pool cue does not respond. It's not a person. Oh. Sawyer sighs. I just want to make another long friend so badly. How embarrassing. Most weapons are light and slashy. I feel self-conscious around them being all unwieldy. You're great. <laughs> what? Psh, nah. Thanks for saying it, even if you don't mean it. And if you do... No. Yeah. How's the dungo part of the game? It's a little repetitive, but honestly, it's fun. It's like kind of mindless. Um, the weapons, like, as you get closer to the person that turns into like each weapon, um, you gain like, not necessarily like different ways to play. Like you're generally hitting the same buttons, but like it, it'll give you like passives or like benefits to the things you're already doing, if that makes sense. Sawyer stretches, enjoying the night air. You decide not to give a gift. Oh, look, the stars are out. It's been a while since I've seen them. I used to go stargazing with my aunt. She'd tell me about the constellations, the stag, the queen's throne, the rose, the open hand. I loved them. Which is your favorite? Uh, I haven't thought about it for a while. When I was younger, my favorite was probably the rose. See, in the Northeast, there was a witch, Kubele, who was so beautiful, her name became a love spell. I mean, she was probably just a cool lady, but it's fun to think she's in the stars. I wonder what the constellation of Boba Butt would be like. Something silly. Yeah. My thoughts exactly. Let's build your legend. Sneakers!
Another one, a love letter. Free is the best price for everything. Sawyer gets it. Um, okay, so it's Seven or Isaac. I've been avoiding Isaac ever since he smooched me. What a deadly misunderstanding. <laughs> Isaac got sundered, like, kind of, yeah, a little bit. <gasps> Achievement unlocked. Ugh. These fancy drinks always look like an awful lot of effort. Little umbrellas or smoke or foam or, at the very least, so much ice shaking. Maybe it's because I don't really drink much, but I don't see the point. Uh, for fun? <laughs> fun, I hear that's a thing people have sometimes. We have better things to do together anyway. Like beat downs. Like beat downs. I can have them all out at once? Holy shit. Oh no, two of them already died though. Well, that's unfortunate. Wow, throwbacks to the last dungeon. Interesting. <gasps> the Queen perfume. Okay. Oh my god, I thought that was an enemy. My poor bug. stuff today. I'm so confused what I've done wrong. I guess we'll see. If something opens up now that I've talked to Sunder, we'll know that that was the problem. That you can't, like, leave any of them on read. Although, I think you should be allowed to leave them on read if that's the case. Yo, this times two thing is so nice. Oh yeah, I'm horrible about that in real life, for sure. Sunder do. Um, literally, like, I talked to Sunder once. When you meet him, he, you go to a club, and he's there, and he's just being, like, a little too full on. And then, like, the other person that he's, like, his friend that's there is, like, watch yourself, because he's kind of, like, a player and a weirdo. And I was like, okay. And then somebody else was like, 
hey, watch out with Sunder. He's like the bad boy of the game, right? And so I was like, I'll just leave him on read. And now I'm like, was that a mistake? <laughs> I didn't know you were so campy. It's like Cupid's nightmare in here. We're just friends, so it's extra weird. You're my fave wielder, so we can chill wherever. I'll just hang out over here if that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like though that the game is like, remember you said you just want to be friends. So it's weird that you were like, let's hang out in this area with a bunch of heart pillows and shit. <laughs> I think you can't leave him on read to progress the story. Interesting, so that might be it. That might, I might have like really boned myself. You could use a breather? We just got here, Isaac. <laughs> Oh shit! I didn't use the I didn't use the chill down zone. Confused. Hmm. Hmm? <gasps> <gasps> I have over a thousand now.
I like the remixes of the same music. No, it's our first time trying to wear something cute in this damn game. These buggies don't do much. They're cute, but they don't do much. I feel like I have more money than I could even spend in this game. Oh, <gasps> no! <laughs> oh, shit. That's fine. I maxed everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Great. A sudden sneeze interrupts your thoughts. You wonder if you're getting sick. I wonder if I'm getting sick. you up time with you has been healing isaac i started to look forward to our outings rowan is so hard to read <laughs> okay hold on okay all righty well Trying to ignore the shit out of Sunder might have delayed how this game progresses for a little bit, but we've maxed out with um we've maxed out with Valyria now. So all of my leveling my leveling, if you will, uh goes dubs. So that's good. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's normally a bit more put together. Not today. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, plan on doing a a a, a a study hall tonight. I don't see why that wouldn't happen. Um, but yeah, we. Working on our mushroom jar, maybe. I know, it's getting longer. Already. <sighs> Anywho. Ugh. Okay. Um, oh, weird. Okay, well, it's cutting stuff off again. Silpha gifted a sub to Catbug uh, near the start of the stream. Thank you very much. Jean Rock, thank you for the 30. Balmir Weevil for the 31. Grace Me for the 17. Suspicious Moogle for the 44. We Lax for the 9. Happy Twitch, baby. Zer for the 80. Andrew Detshanu for the 63. Irish Geezer for the 66. Linny Dota for the 7. Uh, Pret Lethal for um, the Gifted Sub. Citro for the 69. Uh, Hat Cat for the 65. Unfussed for the 39. Bubbly for the 26. Witch Tea for the 41. Accept streams for the 10, open face sandwich for the 10, David Maresh for the 42, Ryuk for the 63, Ardark for the 61, Arsene Hound for the 6, Tennessee Bob for the 55, Kuchikireko for the 7, Kuba the Bear for the 58, John Pirate for the 34, Posh Cat for the 49, Dr. Goose for the 6, Lord T for the 28, Jerry Reg for the 20, Eagle Fang for the 55, Jay Money for the 3 years! Bah, 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 bah. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much for all of the support. Paula, the Chaotic Llama, thank you for the 8. Dona for the 25. Lady Demon Penguin for the 7. Super Forsooth for the 69. Ugh. Yaxel for the 39. Umbrock for the 10. Uh, Preshraz for the 7. Boxa for the 78. Sir Super Steiner for the 8. Hunter Nomad for the 5. Genie! Oh my gosh. I missed you, Genie. Thank you for the 75. I wanted to play this. Are, a ton of, are there a ton of cute BFs? There's a lot of cute people in this game. Yeah. It's Cornelius. Thank you very much. Welcome to the cat gang. Appreciate the subscription. Meldiron, thank you for the four years. Bah, 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 bah. 
happy anniversary. Thank you very much for all the support. Um, and Katie the Cat for the one year. Happy anniversary. Bah, 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 bah. Appreciate it. Praxitus Prime for the eight, and it's just Rebecca for the 25. Thanks, guys. Clark just belly laughing downstairs. Oh, we had Raid Leader off. Oh, that's my bad. We also didn't do any ads or cheers or anything today. I'm sorry. The big man. Sherlock? He is the big man of the house. Don't let Sam tell you different. Um, let's see. Who haven't we raided in a while? Oh, Lumen raided us uh, on Tuesday. Let's go say hi to Lumen. Lumen is a lovely friend. Go say what's up. Spread love, spread joy. Um, I'll see you guys in a few hours. I plan to start at 9, so in like three hours... Uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of sculpting. Could be fun. All right. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time and bye-bye.